Murfreesboro faithful are ready for Middle Tennessee's first Conference USA title game. From program revival to championship game in two years, UAB is determined to make more history. The Blazers and the Blue Raiders battle for the CUSA crown on CBS Sports Network. Leaps over a man. Leaping grab. Touchdown, UAB. Salter makes a spectacular catch. Middle Tennessee touchdown. Give the Brown. Touchdown, Lakers. Spencer, touchdown. Oh, boy. Thompson, sweep it around. For the UAB Blazers, a dream come true. Two years ago, they didn't even have a football team, and today they play for a conference championship. And with that, we welcome you to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, the 2018 Conference USA Championship game. The Blazers against the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. Last week, these two teams met on this field, and in the first half, they already knew that it would be a rematch. Middle Tennessee, champs of the East, UAB, champs of the West in Conference USA. With John Schriffen, Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, and this is a different situation where you have a rematch in a Conference USA and a Conference Championship game for just a third time a week later. So 27 to three a week ago. My question is, who has more pressure, the team who played well, Middle Tennessee, or the team who didn't play well, UAB? The history of our sport suggests that the team that won the week before has a tough time beating that team the same week later. I think all the pressure in this game is on Middle Tennessee. Talking with this UAB staff throughout the week and being down on the field before the game, there's a look of resolve in their eye. I think they're out to prove something, and I see we think we see a much different Blazer team this afternoon as a result. Well, resolve is pretty part and parcel of UAP football. I mean, the saga goes back to all the way, the program shutting down, then bringing it back. Bill Clark raising money, raising support in the Birmingham community. So to now get to this point, at nine wins, you already most wins in FBS school history in a Conference USA championship game for a first time. But the big question mark is Spencer Brown. Brown, where it all begins at running back. He's their blue collar bell cow. Been battling injuries all season long, and it finally caught up with him a week ago. The Blazers had minus one rushing yards. He'll be back on the field. He needs, in my opinion, 20 touches to go over 100 yards for this team to be able to be successful offensively. In front of their home fans again, the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. The success of Middle Tennessee football in recent years has truly been a family affair for the Stockstills and the veteran quarterback, Prince Stockstill. Veteran indeed, Carter. He's a leader, he's a captain. He does all the things you want from an intangible standpoint, but he also delivers the football extremely well in this up-tempo offense that uses a lot of misdirection and keeps defenses on their heels. The second leading passer in terms of accuracy in the season, he's looking to play big today, and it won't be easy against a Blazer defense that's out for some revenge. Well, for Brent Stockstill, this pretty much sums it up. All of the big records in Middle Tennessee passing history belong to Brent Stockstill. He's started since his freshman year. He has maintained a healthy body for this his senior year. And Brent Stockstill's father, Rick, is with John Schriffen. Coach, you have the very unique task of trying to beat the same team two weeks in a row. What is the biggest challenge in trying to beat UAB here in back-to-back -back weeks? We're not worried about that. We're just trying to win this week. Last week's over. We've had a great week of preparation. We're mentally, we're physically ready to go. Last week, your defense was unreal, holding their offense to under 90 yards of total offense. How do you repeat that defensive magic today? I don't know if you can. I mean, that's that's pretty hard to do, obviously. But we just got to play assignment football. We got to play tough. We got to play fast. We got to play physical and keep the ball in front of us. Coach, good luck today. Thank you, my man.
And you look at the defense, as uh, John said, it was incredible last week. Just 89 total yards of offense. It was incredible, AT, by the Blue Raiders. Scott Schaefer did a great job of dialing up even more pressure. And because of the lack of the run game and some injuries on the offensive line, the Blazers really struggled to run the football. So I think the key today is going to be the quarterback play. A.J. Erdley started the season, been banged up a little bit, really struggled a week ago. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Tyler Johnson under center today. He gives them a little bit better ability to run the football and played pretty dang well against Texas A&M. And so some big decisions ahead for Bill Clark, and you hope that you have all of your cards back in the deck. I mean, he tried to play pretty close to the vest, both running back and at quarterback, but we do anticipate, maybe most importantly, AT, you get a lot healthier on that offensive line where it all begins in 2018 football-wise for Bill Clark's Blazers. It really seemed like it was the perfect storm a week ago. So many things could, that went wrong could go wrong, and they did, and it was injuries, and it was their bell cow back, Spencer Brown, being out, but they're going to be healthier on the offensive line. They get Rashard Cook back, who's out a week ago because of food poisoning. Justice Powers only played 22 snaps before throwing an overhand right. So this is going to be a different Blazer offense today. And thankfully, the showers are holding off as we near kickoff because they've been rolling through the Murfreesboro, Tennessee area here just south of Nashville. Rain all morning, but as we get set for kickoff, the Blue Raiders in a Conference USA championship game for the first time. The UAB Blazers in a Conference USA championship game for the first time. One week after they met here at the end of the regular season, the Blazers versus the Blue Raiders again from Murfreesboro, this time for the Conference USA title. And the ball falls off the tee. The ball fell off the tee because the wind has been whipping here. We anticipated bad weather. I think it was rain was the early forecast, but it seems to be pretty dry. But that wind is whipping, so keep your eyes on whether or not that affects the kicking game, which we just saw, and the deep balls when the ball's in the air. UEB won the toss and deferred. Nick Vogel's opening kickoff. Ty Lee will let it sail out the back of the end zone. A very easy touchback with the win. So let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Beginning with the Blue Raider offense in Brent Stockstill, the senior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He said, I want to follow in my dad's footsteps of becoming a coach. And, A.T., you said, I mean, you hear this phrase a lot, coach on the field. He is an offensive coordinator on the field for the Blue Raiders. Knew that he wanted to be a coach since the second grade. Hand off on first down. This is Thomas trying to pick his way back. Thomas gets a couple on first down, and A.T. wants to take us through the rest of the Blue Raider offense. Well, it's important for Middle Tennessee to try to get the run game established as we just saw there. But when they throw it, Ty Lee has been their go-to playmaker, close to many school records. He and guys like Zach Dobson are going to be critical to this pass game being explosive today. Stock still dropping, throwing, wide open, caught. That's Thomas who has it across the 50. Thomas inside the 35. And Tavares Thomas hits the first big one for the Blue Raiders. This is that bunch set that gave them so many problems a week ago. Thomas is there on the left and basically ends up running a wheel route, a breakdown in the secondary. There were some problems early for UAB. They struggled to make adjustments to those bunch sets. The Blue Raiders come right back to it and find money early. Thomas averages five yards a catch. That one goes for 49. And now back on the ground, big hole for Mobley as we take a look at the Blazer defense. Well, the leading tackler on this team is Chris Woolbright. He's number 27, played all 65 plays a week ago. He's got great instincts, but both in the pass game and the run, they need their signal caller there in the middle to be able to show up UAB defensively on its heels. This is the best defense in Conference USA that's getting gassed right here early. Stock still toss back. That's West who has it with a blocker on the edge. 
V. Hannon blocking out there for Terrell West. First trip in the red zone, opening drive, Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee likes to use the entire field down here. They love the screen game, they love the speed sweeps, they love play action. UAB needs to be ready for any and all things against an offense that stresses you and forces you to be right with your eyes. Stock still a 71% passer, second in the nation. They're going to use his legs or try to on second down, but big Anthony Rush, the nose tackle in the middle for the Blazers, makes the stop. He's a big load of laundry, isn't he? I enjoyed watching tape and watching him play. There he is on the left side, just crossing faces, getting himself free. Another good job there by the defensive end to set that edge to allow Rush to be able to come back. That's Mofer doing a good job of getting there first by setting contain. Third down, opening drive, Blue Raiders. It was the 49-yard pass to Thomas that set him up. Stockstill pressured and sacked behind the 20-yard line. Garcia Williams, six foot eight, 255 pound. Jamel Garcia Williams with a sack. UAB is fourth in the FBS in sacks. You see Jamel Garcia Williams, he's got those long arms. Stock still thought he got a face mask there, and I agree with him. That one didn't get called, but nonetheless, Middle Tennessee is forced to kick the field goal due to great UAB pressure there on third down. With the wind whipping, wind in the face of Cruz Holt. And he boots it through. Yes, it's good, although you can see the wind just taking that football nearly to the right side of the upright. But three is on the board. Blazers and Blue Raiders off and running. Three nothing. We got a long way to go in Conference USA. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chick-fil-A Catering. It's the little things that take the stress out of the holidays. By Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. And by Verizon. Get the gift you want on the network you deserve. Flashing all the way back to the last meeting between Middle Tennessee and UAB, it was seven days ago that they uh, played. And yeah, so, all right, here's the obvious question. How many times has it happened two weeks in a row? We only go back to 1980, we can dig this out, but this is the third time it has happened in college football. One of them last year at the Mountain West Conference. Monadies kickoff, and again, wacky with the wind conditions. It's short, and Wilson is going to bring it across the 30, so the Blazers begin with good field position as Wilson gets across the 30-yard line. Chick-fil-A starting lineups on this side of the football, and the answer to the question of who will be the starter for UAB, it's Tyler Johnston the third, the redshirt freshman from Spanish Fort, Alabama. AT, you like the decision? Yeah, the coaches told us this week that they like his ability to move the offense with his legs. The running game has to get going. The offensive line has gotten healthy. But what Johnston brings to the table is an ability to push the ball downfield, but also to create and extend on the drop back pass game. Two games ago against Texas A&M, he took a lick, and so did Spencer Brown, and they have been banged up and slow coming back. But healthy for the championship. And guess who gets it on first down to the 50-yard line? It's Spencer Brown, the sophomore, who is back for the Blazers. First down success was an issue for UAB a week ago. Only 1.8 yards per play. This is a run game that they wanted. And get it right back to Spencer Brown. Again, only one carry last week against the Blue Raiders. Shut it down. He got healthy. Let's take a look at the offense. Well, again, we talked about it. Minus one rush yards isn't good enough for championship football, but good news for the Blazers they get lead to four back he broke his arm in the North Texas game you see that big brace he'll have on his snap hand something to keep an eye on but talking to Bill Clark before the game he got that little twinkle in his eye knowing 72 was back in his lineup they played most of last week's game without three offensive starters on the line and Johnston to the air and it is incomplete off the hands of Andre Wilson and broken up by Middle Tennessee so you got third and ten 
Pretty good coverage that time. The ball was located extremely well. We talked about Johnson's ability to push the ball downfield. A little bit of a push off there, but Wilson not able to fully adjust on a pretty well located football. He was pretty dang good against Texas A&M on third down. Six for eight for 119 yards, almost 11 yards per attempt. On third down, pocket holds up. Delivered cleanly to Yubosi, the big play receiver, and Yubosi fights his way inside the 35-yard line, although he is down. Xavier Yubosi, who is averaging 22 yards a catch, and Yubosi is in need of assistance from the training staff for UAB. It's a big blow for this offense, depending on his health status. 27 catches this year for almost 600 yards. He's a big play guy, 22 yards per reception so far this year. He's catching mm. that crossing route and just looks like he took a heck of a pop there with a pretty physical defensive unit on that side of the ball with Xavier Dupree. Check that, Cordell Hudson. And very good news as Yubosi is back on his feet and headed to the UAB sideline. But a bad collision there, no flags. Yubosi back to the sideline. And now secondary to that, as you say, it was a huge completion and a huge conversion by Johnston to Yubosi to pick up the first down on the opening drive of the Blazers. Johnson's looking pretty good so far. Complete command of the offense. Unlike a week ago, very little pressure early on here for Middle Tennessee. Johnston hands Spencer Brown, the sophomore who has gone over a thousand yards in his sophomore year on this opening drive. Came in just seven yards away. I loved what offensive coordinator Brian Vinson said about him. He said, that's the dog we need. I mean, <laughs> everybody else, we want to get healthy. We want to get the line straight. But he's the guy we need to set the tone for our offense. Oh, and set the tone does he ever. He's a physical inside runner. It doesn't have great top end speed, but it'll take what's there. Plus, get you a couple more. Johnston on second and eight, hand again. Brown again, hole on the right side, and he rolls to the 20-yard line. You can see why. That's a dog they needed. Critical to the run game being successful is being able to get blocks at the line of scrimmage and create the wall. Watch how he bends this back. It's just a nice job, particularly on the end of the line of scrimmage. Number four, Donnie Lee, the tight end with the great seal block. 32 rushing yards already for Brown. Johnston pulls it. Johnston gets inside the 20 yard line. That's Thomas on the stop. Let's look at the defense. Enjoyed our conversation yesterday, Carter, with Darius Harris. He's the leader and the captain on this team. Got some pass rush ability. He's probably a better outside linebacker, but out of need, they play him on the inside. Had a sack a week ago. He's their bell cow. He's also the one that took the punch from right tackle Justice Powers. So he's probably looking for some redemption. They've been on their heels this drive. That run game for UAB, a completely different offense than we saw a week ago. So Powers was ejected from last week's matchup. No suspension. Back for the championship game. Johnston following the right side of his offensive line. He took a pretty good pop from Reed Blankenship, the sophomore leading tackler. Way one without him last week, so he's the big addition back for the Blue Raiders as he gets healthy. Sophomore from Athens, Alabama. Yeah, he's smart. He gets the guys lined up a little bit quicker. UAB is a huddle team. They do have some tempo packages in a situation like that where Blankenship's experience comes in handy. Third and one in the red zone, opening drive. I have a feeling 28 might get this one. Johnston gives it to 28, and the Blue Raiders were thinking right along with the AT. Roisin Collins leads the way, and the Blue Raiders push back on third and one. This play is great from the defense because of how aggressive the second level linebackers are hitting that. Look at that. There's nowhere for Brown to go because of the edge that gets set there with the physical downhill nature. And it's the Blue Raiders now turn to bend but not break, forcing the Blazers field goal. Vogel 29 yards with a win behind him. 
They've had three blocked field goals this year. This one is easily good. One week after UAB and Middle Tennessee played on this field, it was a 3-3 start seven days ago. 3-3 again. UAB football, 1991, they joined the FBS in 96 and had success, but then disbanded. 66 players went elsewhere in 2014. Bill Clark stayed from his kitchen, kept the program alive. Last year, they're back in bowling. This year, they're champs of CUSA West. And now Coach Clark says, Who's going to play your part in the movie? Because that's how this ends. This is this is a movie, and you have to end it with a championship. At the end of this saga of the program going away and the coach staying and bringing the program back and the tremendous support from the Birmingham, Alabama community through all of that, it's nice to be in a championship game. You've got to win that to finish off the tail. Logos kick off, another easy touchback. And for more on the Blazer program, here's John. Well, when this Blazer team first came back in 2017, one ranking service had them ranked the 130th best team in the country. Well, if you're not aware, there are only 130 <laughs> teams in the country. So they did not receive much respect when they came back. Because of that, the summer of 2017, they had these shirts printed up. Hashtag 130. And on the back, it says... They don't know. Now, this team had to start believing that they could be here, and Coach said that was the key to making sure that they could really bring this program back. Guys. And John, that report serves as a reminder about the wind as well. As West goes out of the backfield, it's a wheel route and another big one on the backside for West and the Blue Raiders on the wheel. Yeah, this staff told us that they expected more man coverage, and here they get it. They just move motion onto the backside with Terrell West, who gets lined up one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, and that's a mismatch they'll take all day long. Blazers were indeed breathing some fire this week about what they had to prove in this championship game, but the Blue Raiders have a saga to tell as well, and this is a Middle Tennessee team that is out to say, all right, people are even doubting that you get to, you got to beat somebody twice in two weeks, can't do that, can't be a champion. Said, hey, this is that's what it takes to be a championship football team. That's what we have to do. But Coach Stock still told us, hey, we don't have to beat this team two times in a row. We just got to be 1-0 at the end of the game. Let's focus on what's a task and get her done. Brent Stock still. Wow. Quick release. I mean, feels the pressure and fires it outside to Gatlin Casey. Perfect example of what it's like to have a coach on the field under tremendous duress stock steel falling away on his back foot shows you that accuracy hitting Casey right in stride to move the sticks. He's a remarkable young man. It's a remarkable football family. The stock stills a little wise beyond his years when we sit down and talk with him. It's almost like you're talking with a coach. He's yep. got tremendous maturity. So what would it be like to coach with your dad? He said dream come true and offensive coordinator Tony Franklin says he doesn't like football. He loves it and he's a pleasure to be around. Enjoyed our time with Brent. And now Brent Stock still on the roll finds Mobley and he gets out to the 29 yard line as we check in with Brent in New York. Guys, Big 12 title game in Arlington. Kyler Murray buying time, connecting with Grant Calcaterra. Six-yard strike, halftime. OU leads Texas 20-14. On Brent, that was fun even to see like Texas uh, up early and you're like, all right, this is, this is Big 12 <laughs> championship football. Uh, there's there's going to be more to the story one way or the other. Well, we thought we'd see some maybe some historical offensive fireworks in the Pac-12 championship game. Mm. They didn't give us that, but the Big 12 won't disappoint. Stock still is now 6-4-6, six six, although Casey dragging across the middle paid the price as Chris Mole laid him out. Chris Mole played every snap last week. He's a physical Physical presence that underneath passing game a week ago for Middle Tennessee really struggled. What they did is they opened it up. We've seen the Blue Raiders do some good stuff offensively, moving the football, creating some mismatches on out of the backfield with their running backs. When they do the traditional short passing game underneath, UAB was ready. On third and three, second possession for the Blue Raiders. Stock still under center. Fakes it. Quick toss. Down the seam and incomplete. They had a touchdown. If Terrell West had been able to hang on. It's going to be an interesting situation for Middle Tennessee. If I'm the Blue Raiders, you might want to think about going for it, considering how windy it is and where your kicking game is. But that's a ball that has to be caught by Terrell West. 
big fourth down potentially coming up here and it looks like the Blue Raiders are going to be on the fields as we see the reaction by Fitzgerald Mofor, the second leading tackler on this team knowing something didn't go right and you have to factor in the wind at this point you have wind at your face kicking wise for a sophomore kicker so no man's land fourth and three why not trust Brent Stockstill to toss it again on the wheel route and it is complete this time it's Jaquez Bruce who's a bit of a secret weapon in this championship game for the Blue Raiders he was matched up one on one with Chris Woolbright there's that man coverage that they wanted to exploit and take advantage of number five Jaquez Brutes is twitchy in space and that's the second time in this game in their first two drives that they found money on that play concept and have to switch and go a little bit more zone if for UAB. Bruce shaking his way inside the five. So he's played in three games. This is his fourth. And that's where you play in the red shirt rule now all the way to a conference championship game. You're going to have another year of eligibility for Jacquez Bruce. Plus, you get to play him in the championship game. Three 20 plus yard plays in the early going for the Blue Raiders. One of them to Bruce to set him up. Both teams' red zone trips settled for field goals to begin. This is where your defensive line has to win, either against a run game or stopping the pass. Perfect. Mobley stopped on second down. The redshirt freshman from Knoxville dropped by Chris Woolbright. Woolbright coming down, dislodging from that top of your screen right there. That defensive line did a good job of keeping him free. Defenses are designed to eat up the big guys up front and let your linebackers run. Here's a third and goal situation. Can the Blazers bow their neck and force another field goal here after allowing Middle Tennessee to convert on fourth down? Bruce in the backfield with Brent Stock still. There's some speed on the field. Jacquez Bruce might want to get the football in his hands. Stockstill back in the end zone and misfired somewhere in there. Miscommunication with Patrick Smith, senior wide receiver, Broderick Thomas in coverage. And now the field goal unit will come out. Two trips to the red zone, haven't been able to punch it in. Can't go any better defensively. If you're UAB, that ball was off target. Smith tried to get his ball, body turned around a little bit of touching and some activity there with Broderick Thomas. It doesn't get called, and to your point, Middle Tennessee kicking another field goal. Good hold. Line drive kick is through. And Middle Tennessee takes the lead 6-3. The old goal game so far. Who's going to get in the end zone, CUSA? George H.W. Bush, the 41st president of the United States, died Friday at age 94. A lifelong baseball fan, he played in the first two College World Series with Yale. He's also credited as the first president to throw a ceremonial first pitch ahead of a major league game from the pitcher's mound. He continued to take the field late in life despite being confined to a wheelchair. In Houston last year, he conducted the ceremonial coin toss for the Super Bowl. We pay our respects to President Bush and send our sympathies to his family. Here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, a Conference USA championship game between the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee and the Blazers of UAB. 6-3 start. AT, the offenses have been able to move up and down the field, but not get in the end zone yet. Another short kick taken at the 15-yard line. So this is Carter who brings it to the 29-yard line. And again, good field position for UAB. Take a look at the Dockers inside tracks. I mean, the number's incredible last week. Yeah. I, I put the tape on. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, particularly because I had seen most of the Texas A&M game when it was on television the week before the key in that game was that they didn't have any sort of success running the football particularly on first down average only 1.8 yards per play last week on first down today so far 6.3 yards per play thanks in large part because Spencer Brown is toting the rock Carter slow getting up on that kickoff already Xavier Ubosi has gone out of the game for UAB. So two of the big offensive weapons for the Blazers yet again banged up. John will have more on that in a moment. 
Second possession for the Blazers. Give it to Spencer Brown. Straight up the middle. Brown across the 40-yard line, across the 45. Wesley Bush finally brings him down. This is just an inside zone with cross flow out of the backfield. Boom, kick it right there. The backer goes to the outside. Harris takes the wrong angle, and it just parts the Red Sea and another gash on first down up the middle. Gain of 17. Nothing doing this time as Darius Harris, the fifth year senior from Horn Lake, Mississippi, on the stop. We check in with John. Well, guys, you mentioned Xavier Nkosi, who was helped off the field early in this first quarter. Guys, he was so wobbly that when he brought him into the trainer's tent, he almost fell off the table and had to be helped back on. Because of this a potential head injury, they are taking extreme caution. He is now in the locker room under further evaluation. It is not clear if he will return to this game, guys. Thank you, John. And that's a for a, a UAB team who's already banged up to have one more significant injury early. That's significant. Fake it. Bobble and dropped on the outside. So it was Hayden Pittman, the sophomore from Spanish Fort Alabama, who couldn't haul it in. Only has six catches on the year. The ball was a little bit low, not the best location there for Tyler Johnson, but certainly one that you have to catch if you're Pittman. This brings up a third and nine situation. This is where Middle Tennessee a week ago did an excellent job of creating pressure. The average distance to go on third down last week was almost 11 yards. You want to stay out of these third longs because they're extremely hard to recruit or execute. I expect pressure here from the Blue Raiders. Johnston handles the snap, fires to the sticks, and it's dropped again. Back to back drops by UAB on the outside and the Blazers failed to convert on third and nine. Yeah, they were trying to get that ball to Justin Walker that time. Just like I expected, they bought pressure. Nice job picking up pressure there by Spencer Brown. This ball's thrown beautifully, but this receiving core for the Blazers is really letting this throw game down. They're getting banged up and the guys that are healthy can't catch it. Greenwell kicks with the win. Blankenship and Lee are both back. They will let it bounce, and the Blazers are oh. uh, unable to down it. Wow. Is it? Is it down yeah, at the yeah, two? It's where he touched You're right. it. He tried to take control of it, but. Well, the officials are going to have to get together to discuss this because <laughs> I think we got two different signals. And I think you're right. It, it's going to be down inside the five by Starling Thomas before it crosses the goal line. And now the discussion to see whose indication we're going to go with here. So down by contact versus a possession scenario, as I understand it. But this officiating crew talking with them in the game before and make sure they get this right. The rolling on the field. The rolling on the field. Top of the world. All right. Well, it's an important. Yep, yeah, it's an important PA announcement. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gotten that signal before. The rolling on the field was at the. The kicking team had possession of the ball prior to going into the end zone. The ball will be spotted at the three yard line. The previous play is under review. Understand Can't answer. Yeah. Thank you. And, and understandable. It was a little bit of a lackadaisical effort there. We'll take a look as well in a 6 3 football game. Let's take another look at this kickoff. And again, the original ruling on the field, what was decided. After review, the kicking team did not establish possession. The ball broke the plane of the end zone. Therefore, it's a touchback, first and 10 at the 20 yard line. I couldn't disagree more with that. Clearly, it looked like there was possession. Two steps were taken. He switched hands, put it in his right hand, and dropped the football. I don't know what else you need to do to designate possession. But I disagree with that with that call. It looks crazy a bit on the prior 
first look that we had, but they just didn't get that one right, I don't think. But I think you got to put that on UAB as well for not getting down. No and, question. And it was lackadaisical. So down the seam, they go right back to it. Here's West. West across the 45. West goes rolling across the 50. Terrell West is going to take it all the way to the 25-yard line before Woolbright pushes him out. 54 yards. Brent Stockstill's a vet. He hung in there. He got hit right as he threw the football, but another significant breakdown in the back end of this UAB Blazer defense that is letting guys run completely unopened. They are discombobulated back there. You just can't be the Conference USA's best defense and have unaccounted for receivers, and that's been happening all game long. Handoff, this is Dobson trying to stretch it out on the right side. Dobson just gets a couple. And let's go back to the punt being down and whether that's possession. You take possession of the football with both hands. You move it to your right hand. You take another step and a half and lay it down. It's not that he didn't possess it. He chose to lay it down. Now, granted, you want to demonstrate more possession than that, but clearly I thought he did so. Mobley just inside the 20-yard line. Got third down coming in the waning seconds of the first quarter. This is the third red zone trip for Middle Tennessee. Set up by the big completion to West, which was, by the way, the same play down the scene that he dropped that would have been a touchdown. Go right back to it. And looks like Middle Tennessee is going to take the win. Rick Stock still says, I'd rather have it at my back and have a little more time to discuss. Time out. UAB. Now that's a good one for Bill Clark saying, all right, now we're going to now we're going to make you take that one more snap and play against the win. So nine seconds in a 6-3 game. Blazing. Field goal game so far. Middle Tennessee has third down in the red zone. Nine seconds to go. UAB took the timeout, so they'd be have one more play going into the win here to close the first quarter. This is that diamond formation. They will also throw the football out of this, so eye discipline important for UAB. Stock still winds, tosses, end zone. It is batted away and incomplete. Intended for Casey in the end zone and Yet again, we got the field goal unit coming out. Not a bad decision here. One on one coverage. You've got a mismatch from size wise. The ball was thrown on the back shoulder, but good tight coverage combined with Casey being able or not being able to come down with it. You know, forces the fourth down. And I love this aggressiveness in a championship game. You've got one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the country and an explosive offense. Bring it. Whoa, fourth and four. Rather than the kicking unit, here's the offense. Stock still, three seconds left in the quarter. Fake it, toss it, and on fourth down, Thomas picks it up and takes it inside the 10 and into the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Raiders. Middle Tennessee was content to go to the second quarter with a 6-3 lead. Instead, into the end zone, touchdown, Middle Tennessee. Carter, those are the sorts of calls that win you championships. You can't play this game scared or slow. Middle Tennessee dialing up one of its specials, the double reverse middle screen with some huge blocks from the offensive lineman to get the first touchdown of the game. Cruz Holt, PAT, makes it 13 to three. Smiles for Rick Stockstill, fourth down the red zone. Well, when you get a gift like this, an extra 20 yards, and then West takes it 54. You're set up for success, even after the timeout. Hey, fourth down, let's roll the dice and roll into the end zone. 13-3 Blue Raiders. Let's give love to the big man, A.T. Yeah, that's Amir Luckett that we're taking a look at. This is going to be a double screen and come back and be a middle screen inside, but Amir Luckett right here with a great block. And we're going to see a another block by 37. Patrick Smith right there at the end. Big plays happen because of execution and great effort, and that makes Coach Stock still a happy camper. Oh, big time. So... You know you've been saving that one for a while. I mean, you get to the Conference USA Championship game, might as well roll out your favorite fourth down red zone two-point conversion type play, and it works for a touchdown. Even when Middle Tennessee was content to go to the second quarter, 
Now a touchdown to show for it and a 13 to three lead. When a team's that aggressive offensively, and that's what Middle Tennessee does, their bread and butter is misdirection and making you be disciplined with your eyes. It takes your aggressiveness away. This UAB defense really seems to be on its heels, and they have to get some things sorted out on the back end because they're just giving up way too many big plays. They're going to have to possibly have somebody hold yeah. this football. So Teldrick Ross has now called it to extra duty to hold it for Matt Bonadies on the kickoff. As the wind continues to whip here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. The Stones River Valley. On the D's kickoff. Fair catch, touchback. Let's take a look at the Go RVing road trip backs. This is the first time the Conference USA Championship has been in Tennessee. First appearance for both teams. Last road team to win Southern Miss 2011. We're in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just south of Nashville. Up the road, I'm going to go see the Grand Ole Opry tonight on a Saturday night. Oh, that'll be fun. Is little Jimmy Dickens playing? Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but I know that you're a big fan of taking old Cole Tater and wait. Oh, that's my favorite. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, John Schriffen, our producer Scott Brandline, director Matt Plundo, hard work and crew from the Conference USA Championship game, Johnny Red Floyd Stadium. Tyler Johnston the third trying to spark the UAB offense. Johnston keeps the play alive and turns it into somehow a gain of eight or nine before Darius Harris makes the stop. Carter, sometimes the best throws are the ones you don't make. Great decision this time by Johnson and showing you that open field running ability to extend and to create with his legs. He's not the most dynamic runner, but he picks up eight yards on what otherwise would have been a busted play. Hey, big congratulations to Horn Lake, Mississippi. They won the 6A state title last night. Darius Harris, a Horn Lake, Mississippi, the, the Eagles. And he was proud yesterday to tell us about uh, the success. I mean, it's a program that just years ago was a losing program and now state title, 6A. He was all cheese and super proud. And all these guys that have a chance to go on to play college, including myself, you always root for your high school. It's where you got your start, and he couldn't have been more happy for his guys back home. Vito Grove. Johnston tosses out of the backfield. That's Hayden Pittman, who had the drop earlier, the sophomore from Spanish Fort. High school teammate of Tyler Johnston the third makes the catch. UAB's having tremendous success running the football on first down, something they couldn't do a week ago. This drive, it's clear that they're trying to go to the play action pass game, maybe prevent some of the touches for Brown. You don't know how well his ankle's going to hold up only one touch a week ago. But again, a week ago, only 1.8 yards on first down created way too many third and longs. Well, unfortunately for the Blazers, as Brown's going to take it and pick up the first down and cross the 50, this game is playing out much like last week did. Tight early, then Middle Tennessee ended up winning 27 to 3. Just some split flow zone, but this is the counter to that. You try to get the defense to overreact, and they essentially block themselves. Brown taking advantage of that, getting the edge, and picking up a nice run to keep this drive going. Brown, the sophomore from Kimberly, Alabama. 15 rushing TDs, seventh in the nation. He takes it on first down. Brooks there on the stop. But AT, to your point, UAB running the football much more effectively this week. I really think that lead to four, number 72, who broke his arm in the North Texas game. We featured him in the opening lineups. What he brings is some physicality, but also he can sort out the trash and help with communication. He's been particularly effective early on in this game, which is why the Blazers' run game is moving quite a bit better this week than it did last week. Sorting out the trash being an offensive line uh, yeah, term, right? Yeah, the defensive players being the trash. <laughs> <laughs> There's Wilson off the edge. It's Lee, rather, and he gets to the 40-yard line, so you're setting up third and short. And on third and short, now you're going to have to rely big time on that offensive line, which has been, I mean, just totally jumbled this year. Yeah, it's been musical chairs, particularly at the center position. They started their third a week ago. Rashard Cook gets food poisoning. How many times has that happened in your college football career? And then Justice Powers throws an overhand right into the head of Darius Harris and gets ejected in the second quarter there. So they were just undermanned last week, and the run game suffered up front. 
Johnston push on the left side and got enough with a good push from James Davis and Rashard Cook. Now you talked about Cook. I mean, he was in the emergency room at kickoff last week because of the food poisoning. Serious deal. They said they couldn't keep him from up chunking his breakfast. And if you've ever had food poisoning, man, everything in your body hurts, including your eyelashes. It's understandable that he didn't make it, but getting him and lead to four back has been critical. And what we're seeing here is UAB starting to play a little defense on offense, helping out their guys that are getting exploited, going small ball. They're trying to control the football here, and they're doing a beautiful job to rest their guys up on the other side of the ball. Johnston pulls it and has a blocker on the edge. It's Scott who is blocking for his QB, Johnston. Liggins makes the stop, but another positive gain on first down as the Blazers take it inside the 30. You got to have somebody that sets contain. This is a great read by Johnston. He sees the defensive end come in, and again, they're slipping out with that cross flow. This time, it's the tight end, Logan Scott. You think that the ball's going to get hit up inside. The defense tries to do something called a wrong shoulder, and the offense exploits it by going to the outside. Second and one. Hand it off again, move the chains again inside the 30-yard line. Factor this in for UAB. You heard the report from John about Xavier Ubosi, who was in the, the locker room after he took an early big blow. I mean, he's your he's your big play wide receiver, averaging 22 yards a catch, five touchdowns. That's a big weapon for the Blazers that they don't have right now. Well, we knew coming into this game, Carter, that adjustments were going to be key, and this Blazer offense has adjusted by not taking so many deep shots and playing a little bit of small ball here, controlling the line of scrimmage. Brown just gets a couple here. Jones there on the stop. So yet again, UAB is moving it between the 20s, but down in tight. Now can they get it in the end zone for Bill Clark? They've been pretty good once they get down here this season. Getting touchdown 61 percent, 75 is probably the gold standard of what it is you want to do. With the wind being what it is, they would certainly like to run or throw this ball across the goal line instead of trying to kick more field goals. Johnston toss inside the 20 yard line, so officially into the red zone. Now with Street making the grab, let's check in with John. Well, guys, one thing I've noticed this Middle Tennessee defense, they are really winded right now. A lot of the guys with their hands on their hips bending over at the waist. You can see with this long drive sustained by UAB, it is really starting to take a toll on this defense, and we're only in the second quarter. And that's been a strategy for this team all season long. They have dominated time of possession with that run game. That element was gone a week ago. What this does is it, A, makes Middle's defense tired, but it also allows your defense to rest up and make those adjustments to figure out how to stop the Blue Raider offensively. 12th play of the drive, another handoff. Brown takes it inside the 15, and Brown is slow getting up. He has carried the load. 25 total plays for UAB, 14 Spencer Brown carries. And these are just body blows. What I'm seeing is still aggressiveness from that second level by the linebackers. Look at the way that Harris hits that hole, but the difference is you have more experienced offensive linemen who can pick that up this week, which is why UAB is having success running the football. Not nearly as much successful pressure this week from the Blue Raiders than we saw a week ago. Johnson going to pull it again. Blocker on the edge, tripped up. He takes it inside the 10-yard line. Wesley Bush, the senior from Macon, Mississippi, made a nice ankle tackle on Tyler Johnson the third. Probably saved a touchdown there. Good job of coming back underneath and getting those legs of Johnston tackling has been an issue at times with these guys but here you're in a second medium situation play action passing getting your tight ends involved or putting some speed on the field like they've done here shovel street inside the 10 it'll be third down and short inside the 10 is Darius Harris the middle linebacker from Horn Lake, Mississippi on the stop. And third and three from inside the 10. I think given the way that this ball game is going, you have to expect UAB thinking two down territory. You want to get half of this if you can. You can still get the first down. They've had tremendous success with that split flow zone, both with Johnson keeping it and Brown getting the football. A lot to keep your eye on here if you're Middle Tennessee. 
On third and three, it's Brown pushing inside the five. First and goal, UAB. Jamal Jones on the stop. Well, Bill Clark told us great job up front on the block there that time. The last minute lead to four, the center coming off on that run blitz up inside. The Blazers just simply couldn't do that a week ago, but they do it here, pick up the first down. Now they're knocking on the end zone. On first and goal, Brown again, pushing, he is, and touchdown, Blazers. A drive where UAB flexes its muscle and gets into the end zone. 16 plays, and it ends in a Spencer Brown touchdown run. The 16th TD of his sophomore year, 26th of his UAB career. Bill Clark told us that when you have a game like this and you're playing an opponent back to back, you got to be who you are. We're going to minimize our game plan. We're going to run our base runs and we're going to go just play. Well, it looks like they're doing that. And Bill Clark's got to be happy with that 16 play drive for a touchdown. He told us this week we got to get back to who we are. And this is who the Blazers are. Brown pushing into the end zone. Touchdown. Our Dr. Pepper fans cam here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yeah, the Smokers, the Cakes, Middle Tennessee. We're about a half mile from the geographic center of the state of Tennessee, just in case you're wondering why we were, why we were uh, it, here in Middle Tennessee. Spencer Brown doing a beautiful job running the football here in Middle Tennessee. Nine rushes, 32 yards, seven of his rushes for a first down. That is the exact success that the Blazers wanted offensively here today. That's a touchback to the 25-yard line. CBS's Super Bowl season continues tomorrow. Regional action. Baltimore heads to Atlanta. Patrick Mahomes drives Kansas City into Oakland. Check your local listings and kick off your day with the NFL Today powered by Ram Trucks at 12 Eastern. So for Middle Tennessee, it remembers field goal, field goal, and then converting on fourth down the red zone and setting up the touchdown. I think the adjustment UAB needs to make on the defensive side of the ball is to play more base quarters and get out of this man coverage because they're letting guys run free. Brent Stockstill falls as he hands off and that's a busted play. Mobley loses yardage. Anthony Rush will get the tackle for loss. That, and yeah, Brent's a little, little slow getting up. He took, he's taking a couple pops. Yeah, he has. We saw him on that big Terrell West run, just kind of trips right there. But earlier on, at the end of the first quarter with that big play to Terrell West, he got up a little ginger. He got hit as he threw that football. That's something to keep an eye on. On the roll on second and 11. Tosses, check down. And that's Patrick Smith. Brent Stockstill gets hit again. Yeah, Jamel Garcia Williams got to him again at the very end of this play. To the top of your screen, excuse me, Stacy Keeley is the one that hits him. I don't know if they make him any tougher than Stockstill. He's battled injuries throughout his career, but UAB's got a pretty ferocious and physical front seven. They're trying to make their presence felt. Hard to rattle 12, though. All the way back to the days at Prattville. Which Clark's team known for being tough. Stock still deep shot, incomplete, and on third and five after taking some blows, the QB misfires on third and five, looking for Patrick Smith, and Middle Tennessee will punt it away. And there was some late pressure, and I almost think that Maybe Stockstill was a little unsure, wasn't able to set his feet there. Anthony Rush got there on the pass rush. And UAB, for the first time in a long time, getting a stop on third down. Secondarily to the offense, having a 16-play drive. Clearly some adjustments and a fresh defense being the difference. On of these punting with the win. Wilson has it inside the 30-yard line. Wilson is shoved back. Nice play by West on special teams. Three-point game again, Blazer football.
Things looking up for the Blazers. They get a three and out on defense after their offense rolled on a decisive 16 play touchdown drive. Yeah, well, this drive started with Tyler Johnson attempting a play action pass. It's not there, so he smartly pulls the football down and picks up eight yards on first down. That really got them going. Then they go back to it. The bootleg distributes the football there to Jerrion Street. Then they feed their big guy, Spencer Brown, down there in the red zone when they needed some plays up front and some push they got it and number 28 being all the difference in the world today offensively brown had only one carry last week zero yards i mean it was in the second quarter and he immediately left the ball game wasn't feeling it and by that point you knew you were coming back for a championship game so Johnston pulls it again on first down and again sets him up. Glad he makes the stop. But just like the last drive, it's Tyler Johnston pulling it, making a play with his legs. They're trying to bring some backside pressure there. You saw number 29 completely confused as to what was happening. He's the cornerback, Daryl Randolph. And now it's UAB using some misdirection that's catching Middle Tennessee, being a little bit overly aggressive, trying to shut down that inside zone game of Spencer Brown. And off Spencer Brown trying to stretch on the edge. Brown crosses the 50, breaking tackles, rolling inside the 45. DQ Thomas was the last Blue Raiders to lay his hands on Spencer Brown. Justice Powers, the right tackle. Here he is here. He's going to pull. Keep your eye on him. He just gets a nudge on Reed Blankenship, who's trying to set the edge right there. A little bit of a push is what allows Brown to get himself to the edge. And now the Blue Raiders bringing the pressure off the edge. Yeah, that was a nasty looking one in the middle. Ferguson and Harris combine on the stop and make sure everybody's all right. There is some hitting going on down now. It's dangerous down there in the trenches, but there's the hands on the hips that we're talking about with John's great report. It's a great observation because these are body blows that really bode well for this UAB team who in the second half averaged five yards a carry against Texas A&M. Johnson, deep shot, it is caught! Touchdown, Blazers have the lead. Andre Wilson down the seam. A 40-yard touchdown pass. Tyler Johnston, the third, to Andre Wilson. UAB on top. Well, we've seen Johnson's legs. Now we see his ability to deliver the football. Not much air underneath there, but beautifully located. Andre Wilson taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the Blazers on the board again. Nick Vogel, PAT. So last time the Blazers marched down methodically 16 plays into the end zone. They get a three and out. And now quick strike, four plays, touchdown. Blazers coming back. Seventeen thirteen, Blazers on Middle Tennessee. Let's go back to the touchdown. UAB's on the 40-yard line, just some play action passes, sucks the safety up, creates a one-on-one -on -one situation, and Andre Wilson with the great release, unimpeded, with a beautiful flow throw there by Tyler Johnston, and it's UAB's turn to take advantage of a physical running game, some misdirection, and a vertical passing game that I think caught the Blue Raiders by surprise. You know what isn't surprising? The, the football fell off the mm -hmm. team again. Nick Vogel doing his best. Oh, no. It's like Tiger at Augusta. <laughs> kickoff. We have kickoff. And it'll be a touchback to the 25. Monday night, 6 Eastern. Join CBS Sports Network as our team of NFL experts break down all the Week 13 action exclusively from a quarterback's perspective. Don't miss NFL Monday QB on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, Carter, the story of the game, part of it anyway, is UAB's running the football, but look at that ball control. This is kind of their bread and butter. Bill Clark, a defensive head coach, obviously wants a physical run game, so his creatures on the field right now can be a little bit more rested and have more time to talk. 
It's going to be some good cat and mouse against an offense that can really pressure you with their alignment and assignment. Brent Stockstill, first and ten, on the roll. Nowhere to go with the football, so he just dumps it out of bounds. Blue Raiders went three and out. Last time they had the football. Now we're going to have a discussion about intentional grounding. And there are no flags. Trey Crawford applies the pressure. Boy, Zach Dobson was wide open, but Stock still couldn't get him. He's at the top of the screen in motion right there on the 30-yard line. There's pressure there. If he can set his feet and throw that football, that's possibly a touchdown. That's a perfect example of the front end working beautifully with the back end. If you get there with pressure, you help your defensive backs out, and the Blazers needed it. Credit those big guys up front for preventing a possible touchdown there. Second and ten. Stock still incomplete. Off the hands, Jimmy Marshall. And now you're in third and ten again. Culver with a shove on Marshall. Well, Marshall had a little bit of shove as well. There was a little bit of a push off there, trying to create some separation. Marshall was the go-to target. Had a big catch that prevented an interception a week ago. Players getting a little bit chippy, and Marshall extending that left hand again. The officials letting these guys play, but those are the sort of things that can get you hurt in a situation like this. Now it's third and long. Another opportunity for UAB to get themselves off the field. Do they bring pressure? No. Stock still throws. It is picked off. Just the seventh INT thrown by Brent Stock still this year. Just the second here at home in Murfreesboro. And it's Chris Woolbride who has the pick. An uncharacteristic bad decision by Brent Stock still. He looked the safety off and stared at double pumped it and forced that football into double coverage. UAB that time only rushed three and they dropped eight. One of those eight that they dropped was number 27, the middle linebacker, Chris Woolbright, who comes up with his second interception of the year in the championship game. A three and out. Last time Blazer defense was on the field and now they get the takeaway. But here's the first penalty flag of the game. False start, offense, number 57, five-yard penalty, first down. Justice Powers, the right tackle. We were giving him some love earlier. Had a huge penalty a week ago, as we've mentioned. Got ejected from the ball game. But he was pulling that time. And as an offensive lineman, man, it's hard. You know you got some ground to cover. You want to get there quickly. You just got to hold your water there if you're Justice Powers because now you're behind the sticks negating some of this first down success UAB's had today. Blue Raiders bring pressure off the edge. Tyler Johnson the third. Pats it, rolls, and tosses it. And that is, we'll see, Flat. Well, it's grounding. Yep. Going to see whether it was fumble or incompletion, but it will be intentional grounding for sure. Back to back penalties after there wasn't a single penalty in the game. Intentional grounding, offense, number 17. The ball did not get to the line of scrimmage. It'd be a loss of down at the spot of the foul. The down counts. We saw Johnson earlier when it wasn't there try to make a run for it. He was under pressure. He double pumped the football. Now just trying to make a play with the overhand right sky hook there. But it didn't cross the line of scrimmage. He wasn't outside the tackle box. Intentional grounding. You don't want UAB's your QB. Going. You don't want your QB looking like Kareem. <laughs> no, 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 you don't. For lots of reasons, but most particularly that they're going the wrong way now. Big push. Second and 25. They block it up. Toss it deep. Why not? Caught inside the 10-yard line. Kalen Carter holds it in. You've earned the right. Strut it out. This was the thing that Middle Tennessee was worried about, the running game and the vertical pass game. This basically was a max protection two-person route. Kalen Carter, who we saw leave the game earlier, reaches out with a huge catch and pickup. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 96 of Middle Tennessee. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. That is number 96, first unsportsmanlike foul. And now the flags are flying on both sides after a totally clean game to start. 
It's getting a little chippy. It's a championship game. Middle Tennessee, we open the show with it, maybe feeling a little bit of pressure. UAB hitting a huge deep shot, and then you add insult to injury. If you're Rasheem Collins, you simply cannot do that. A senior has to make better decisions. First and goal. Spencer Brown. It's Johnston who's going to take it into the end zone and do a little talking to Reed Blankenship. Touchdown, Blazers. Off the interception just three plays later into the end zone. It is 20 unanswered for UAB with a PAT coming. Just misdirection, quarterback zone read who goes to the outside. UAB is killing Middle Tennessee, whose defensive ends, nobody's there with contain. They're so concerned and fixated on Spencer Brown that they're not playing fundamentally sound defense, and they just gave up a touchdown as a result. 21 straight for UAB. The Blazers have seized control of the Conference USA Championship. More post-curricular discussions between the Blazers and the Blue Raiders. Only the seventh INT thrown this year by Brent Stockstill. And UAB's defense takes it away. 43-yard completion to Carter. And an easy touchdown run for Tyler Johnston the third. 24-13 UAB. An early 13-3 lead for Brent Stockstill and the Blue Raiders has turned into UAB rolling. Yeah, you're going to see Middle Tennessee bring pressure here. And then the tight end there, Donnie Lee's just going to go to the outside. Everybody's crashing inside to try to stop Spencer Brown, and then it's just an easy walk-in. You've got to be disciplined with your eyes. You have to have somebody there that sets the edge. And it's a big reason why UAB's winning this ball game. They're controlling the line of scrimmage and the legs of Tyler Johnson and the decision to start him dead to today proving to be the difference. Guess what? But he, but he, the ball came off the tee. You got it. All right, Blazers gonna have to uh, gonna have to figure out somebody holding the football now. Looks like it's gonna be Jerry and Street, one of the running backs, gonna come out and have to hold it. Hope to avoid a Lucius, uh, a Lucy and Linus situation. Right, here. that is precisely what you're focused on at this point. You're looking for the great pumpkin. No Lucy. Short. Lee is going to scoop it up. Did he call for a fair yeah, catch? I yes, didn't. he did. Wow. The very end. Yep. Yeah. His feet are on the goal line. He signals with his right hand. And right, so he's. Let's see if we get the explanation, but it's going to result in the, at the 10 yard line because. The receiver gave the fair catch signal. The ball hit the ground. Therefore, it's dead at the spot of where he gained possession. First down. Yeah, that's a wacky yep. one, but that this uh, crew was on top of it from the get go. Bounce, fair catch, therefore dead ball. So, fair catch, if he catches it, then you bring it out to the 25 yard line. But because of the bounce, catches it on a bounce down at the 10. And another break for UAB. I mean, that's a difference of 15 yards. Huge. Stock still winds up. There's a toss complete. Casey back to the quick game. And Casey is dropped after a minimal gain on first down. The Blazer defense flat getting after it. Yeah, they are. Middle Tennessee going back to its short controlled underneath pass game. That time trying to hit a tunnel screen coming back inside to Casey. But UAB sniffing it out. Even last week, this Blazer defense did a nice job of taking away that short to intermediate pass game. It was the deep shots that gave him the problem. Flea flicker. Brent Stockstill fires. They go to another trick play. It is complete, and it is a first down for Middle Tennessee. There is a flag down. Good eye discipline on that back end on the stutter and go. They didn't fall for it, so Stockstill had to come back underneath. This is an offense that preys on defense as being wrong. UAB defended that one pretty well. There are two fouls on both teams. 
personal foul, roughing the passer, number 97 on the defense, hitting the quarterback high. Pass interference, offense, number 87. Those penalties offset will replay the down. Mm. That's a big one with Casey with the push off. Big time. Here's we see Keeley hitting stock still a little bit high. Defensive linemen smell blood. They know the quarterback's feeling it. They're going to go after him. And then just the offensive push off. That didn't seem to be that egregious there. We saw a couple of those earlier on in the game. I don't mind if they're going to let guys do that, but just keep it consistent all game long. So if that's not a push off, it's a catch plus 15 yards for Middle Tennessee. You're out to near midfield, but because the push off, now second and eight, still backed up. Hand off, Thomas, and the Blazers have forced Middle Tennessee into third and long again. It was a three and out two possessions ago. Then they got the pick on third and long, and now third down again as the Blue Raiders are backed up and on their heels. Anthony Rush has been having a huge game. He's such a disruptive player in there. Screens, draws, delays, something safe here is in Middle Tennessee's best interest. And if the Blazers get a stop, you use a timeout to preserve as much time as possible to get the ball back on offense. They've yet to convert a third down all game long. They've been excellent this season up till today. Stock still third and seven. Fling it to the outside. Incomplete. Thomas. And here comes a flag, and this uh -oh. could be targeting. Yep. And Bill Clark is irate. At the very least, it's going to be a personal foul. You love playing aggressive, but you got to be smart. That really is helpful to Middle Tennessee. Regardless of what this call is, targeting or just a personal foul. Personal foul. Defense, number 22, late hit. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Late hit rather than targeting, you be the judge. Yeah, he's in the bread basket in the strike zone. Just comes over and hits him. This ball's off his hands. One, two full steps, then the shoulder comes. Remember, these officials are trying to send a message. These teams have been a little bit chippy, and Bill Clark is frustrated with that call. Wow, that is a huge break for Middle Tennessee. Now can Stock still take advantage? Coverage downfield. Stock still complete over the middle. He took a shot, he though. He did Carter. take a shot. Big one. And now Brent Stock still is down. It's Anthony Rush, all 350 pounds on Brent Stock still. Anthony Rush only has one sack on the season, but you see, he keeps himself alive, gets himself up off the ground, and puts all of that 350 pounds. On top of Brent Stockstill, who's a trooper and still there under center. Wow. On second and five, feeling the pressure again. Stockstill on the roll. He's going to cut back, get the first down, take the pop across the 40-yard line. The toughness is not in question. No, it's not. I almost want him to run out of bounds there, though. They've got the three timeouts. The clock will stop when they reset the chains, but I'm more worried about him getting hit here. Just run out of bounds, but he keeps himself north and south, picks up the first down, which is critical there. You do have the wind here if you're factoring in field goal at the end of the half for Middle Tennessee. Three timeouts, one minute to go in the first half. Screen incomplete on the outside intended for Ty Lee. But at least it stops the clock at 57 seconds, and Brent Stockstill is clearly shook. He's shook, and he's feeling it. Sidearm that one, trying to throw it around the outstretched arms of the UAB defense. This is a situation where you got to catch your breath. You've got all three timeouts, so you can put the ball on the field wherever it is you want. You want first downs, positive gains, and you have to avoid sacks. UAB does an excellent job of getting after the quarterback and protecting the passer, something that Middle Tennessee has struggled all season long, 11th this year in the Conference USA, 110th in the country. Expect some pressure here. Zips it on second and 10 complete across the 40, down to near the 30. Marshall has it. 50 seconds, you have three timeouts with the wind at your back. You're in field goal range right now, you would think, for Cruz Holt. So sometimes for shots to the end zone. I expected pressure there. UAB didn't do it. They only rushed three. Stock still found the hole in that zone defense beautifully. And now that one back to Marshall. Looking to get it back to Marshall. Bronte Harris.
This is the perfect offense for this sort of situation. 42 seconds is plenty of time. Yes, you can, of course, kick the field goal, but you want to put this ball in the end zone. It's second and 10. At some point, they need to convert this and or think about taking a shot to the end zone where they've got some one-on-one -on -one matchups like they do here at the bottom of the screen with some pretty good height on a shorter corner. High snap, handled by Stockstill. Chased, dumps it, that's complete. Casey, did he get out of bounds? Yes, he did, 35 seconds. Crawford actually pushed him out. That's a good play for Middle Tennessee. Casey gets some more yards. Now you're without question in field goal range. Still have three timeouts, so there you, yeah. you, got t you got lots of options here for the Blue Raiders. You can run the football. We haven't seen a speed sweep so far. But they can run flares out of this formation as well. Trying to get a read on how UAB is going to defend it, making the adjustments. Stocks will saying, hey, hurry up. We only have eight seconds. Get something called. You got to communicate it. Stock still third and one. Zips it complete. First down inside the 20 yard line. Mobley has it. Crawford again pushes him out. 31 seconds. Well, now the Blue Raiders may be thinking about using the last 31 seconds of the clock, not giving it back to UAB one way or the other. You want to get in the end zone and leave nothing on the clock, as little as possible on the clock for the Blazers. That's the first third down conversion, by the way, for the Blue Raiders. UAB thus far in the ballgame been stout down here in the red zone. Stock still, toss, goal line. It is bobbled and incomplete, intended for DeMars Thomas. Just a little bit too much air there, which allowed the defense to recover. But this ball hits Tavares Thomas right in the hands. He has to catch it. He can't throw that football and locate it any better. Credit Stockstill. He's taking a licking, but he keeps on ticking, seeing the entire field. But I think we're going to have a timeout here to discuss timeout. what this critical second down play is. Middle Tennessee, their first. It will be 30 seconds. So just get everything organized for the last 25 seconds of this half. 24 to 13 UAB. Coming up on the halftime report, powered by Ram Trucks. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Randy Cross, and Kevin Carter scores highlights from around the other conference championship games, including Oklahoma and Texas. Conference USA Championship game here. It was a 13-3 start for Middle Tennessee. That's what it looked like last week when No Clark's Blazer team got beat 27-3. But it, with three straight touchdowns, the Blazers have taken command. Rick Stockstill, still two timeouts, 25 seconds, and you got the wind at your back. So some time to get it in the end zone. Down here, screens are effectively runs because they're likely to get tackled Time out. in the middle of the field. Now UAB Crazy. wants to talk about it will be what it is. Seconds. And you can't take these timeouts in the halftime with you. I think this is great usage by both of these staffs just to make sure that they get this right. This is one of the things we thought about coming into this game, the cat and mouse and some of the adjustments that were going to get made. You don't want to overthink this. You just want to react and respond and trust your base rules and situations to help get yourselves out of jams. Like UAB's defense finds themselves here. Great drive by Middle Tennessee. Stock still leading the charge, dealing and delivering the football under duress with precision. Drive started at the 10 after the fair catch. Bounce kickoff, Ty Lee play. That ball hung up in there forever. So now each team has used a timeout prior to second and 10. UAB looks to be in two-man coverage, meaning man coverage across the board, but two high safeties. Making an adjustment, backing off from press. Stock still chased, second down. Off his back foot, complete Casey again, out of bounds oh, again inside the 10. You're right, that was borderline, another targeting or late hit. Anyways, Mofor and Diggs combine. Third down coming, 19 seconds. Clock stop as Casey got out of bounds. Casey's effectively becoming the check down for Brent Stockstill when nothing's there vertically. Good coverage on the back end. Just take underneath and what the defense gives you. Stockstill being masterful at that so far. 
It's third and two inside the 10. UAB's defensive line can get pressure. They're collapsing the pocket. They're dominating Middle Tennessee up front. That offensive line has to hold up here. There's a shovel. That's Bruce. Bruce driven back, chased down, back outside the 10-yard line. So now you're going to have fourth down. And Rick Stockstill has two timeouts to play with. He will take it down. And with five seconds, take the timeout. Mofor is slow getting up. It's Gerald Mofor, the junior will linebacker for UAB. So still one timeout remaining. You got fourth down coming in. One would anticipate Cruz Holt and the kicking unit coming out with five seconds. As Mofor gets some help going back to the UAB sideline. He's been a heck of a player for him all season long, but UAB once again bowing their neck in the red zone. It's a tremendous effort that time by cornerback Bronte Harris defeating the block of the wide receiver to prevent the pickup for the first down or possibly more. This is the fourth red zone trip for Middle Tennessee with only one touchdown to show for it. So that's been the huge difference for the Blazers holding Cruz Holt to field goal attempts now what they do man they're among the best in the country only allowing 54 percent touchdowns when you cross the 20. timeout middle tennessee They're trying to ice themselves a 30 second timeout okay here's the injury was what stopped it at five seconds so that timeout that rick stock still was motioning wasn't granted until this point at two seconds so the, the injury stopped it which allows three more seconds to tick off now the second timeout is granted and that's where rick stock still wanted it anyway so that you don't leave any time on the clock after the kick two minute situations a rule of thumb is if the official stops the clock he starts the clock and that's what we saw there good heads up decision making and execution by middle tennessee staff creating the opportunity for this field goal which would be huge here before they go in the halftime because uab gets this ball back to start the second half and now UAB uses a timeout. Timeout. UAB, their last. It will be 30 seconds. Special teams really been kind of hit or miss for UAB this oh. year. They're really good at two things, getting kicks blocked yes. and blocking other people's kicks. They have been involved in nine blocked kicks this season on both sides, as in having them blocked, like you said, or blocking kicks. So it has been an adventure. And I think with all these timeouts used, you, you understand how familiar <laughs> UAB and Middle Tennessee have become over the last two weeks in setting up this championship game, playing for the championship game. They, they know each other very well at this point, shall we say. And you add to that the unique nature of just having played a week ago. I can't imagine all the second guessing that took place and these coaches had to prevent themselves from doing. So now, presumably, 27-yard field goal attempt, good hold. 27-yarder is good. Zeros on the clock. Three for Middle Tennessee to end the run by UAB. But the 21 straight by the Blazers prior to that field goal has given UAB a 24-16 lead at the half in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. A 13 to three start for Middle Tennessee. Then UAB rattled off 21 straight points. Field goal drive at the end of the half for Middle Tennessee. 24 16 now. Blazers lead the Blue Raiders in the rematch from seven days ago. For Middle Tennessee in Brent Stockstill, it was a hot start and then he got hit. Yes, he did. He opened the game with a beautiful pass for the touchdown there to Jaquez Bruce. But then he started getting pressed. He was under duress and felt some pressure. UAB started playing zone and he cooled off and that's when UAB started to control the line of scrimmage. Spencer Brown taking over with the addition of the offensive line getting themselves healthy. He puts himself in there and then Tyler Johnson showing you that vertical press ability with the touchdown to Andre Wilson. It has been a UAB offense and defense specialty as we take a look here at our Chick-fil-A game summary. The third down 
the defense has been the difference. The Blazers looking good on both sides of the ball. Spencer Brown had only one carry, no yards last week against the Blue Raiders, and he has been rolling impressively. He led that 16-play drive. Touch back to the 25. Let's check in with John Schriffen. Thank you so much. I had a chance to speak with both head coaches at the half. Let's first start with UAB's Bill Clark. He admitted to me that his team was actually caught off guard because Middle Tennessee offensively came out with some looks that they were not prepared for. But they made those first half adjustments defensively, and he feels like they are rolling defensively and offensively. However, they will be without wide receiver Xavier Ubosi, who is out for this second half. As for Middle Tennessee State, I spoke with head coach Rick Stocksell, he told me that his quarterback, Brent Stocksell, took a big hit, but he said, you know what? He's been taking big hits all year. He will be fine. What we need to do is stop this run. That's why UAB has been able to possess the ball so well on offense. And the trust goes both ways with father and son. You know, no matter what, the flags on the first snap for UAB. Some miscommunication there by Middle Tennessee. False start, offense, number 58, five-yard penalty, first down can't do it. That's not the way you want to come out at halftime and start the game. You saw right there Tyler Johnson point to himself. That might have been a cadence issue, but nonetheless, here it is, first and 15. You take a look at all the flags and penalties. UAB just not a disciplined football team. They've got to keep that a little bit better here in the second half. It's my favorite graphic title of the year. Flag, 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 flag. Johnson deep shot intercepted at the 48-yard line. Wesley Bush with his sixth interception of the season. Coming into today, only four players in the nation. More interceptions in the senior from Macon, Mississippi, and he has his sixth of 2018. UAB wanted to run the ball on first down. It was a false start. This put him at first and 15. They take a deep shot and a poor decision on the ball that shouldn't get thrown. Wesley Bush, to your point, Carter, is a ball hawk. Middle Tennessee with a break on the plus side of this field. Two plays into the second half, they steal a possession. Mm. The 14th interception of the year by the Middle Tennessee defense. They have four pick sixes this year. Wesley Bush has two of those pick sixes, including a 75-yarder at UTEP. Inside give, first down, short game, Ty Lee. Quarter, those interceptions play an even bigger role. This season, Middle Tennessee is 8-0 when they have an interception and 0-4 without one. That last play might have proved to be the biggest difference maker for this Blue Raider football team. Now the offense on the plus side of the 50. Brent Stock still, Lee on the outside on second and nine. Lee to near the 40-yard line. Bronte Harris shoves him out, third and short. The confusion that happened early on with Middle Tennessee, UAB was in a lot of man coverage. They switched and went to zone. I think that threw Middle Tennessee off its game. Stock still threw for over 200 yards in the first quarter, but only 70 yards in that second quarter when UAB made its changes. Going to be interesting to see how both of these teams adjust here on a third and short. High percentage passes, getting rid of the football quickly and possibly Stock still's legs. Only one third down conversion. Make it two third down conversions. That's a tough grab by Patrick Smith that he hangs on with D.A. Williams trying to wrestle him down, move the chains. Well, that's what you do when you're in a zone defense. It's been, but don't break. Stock still knows where he wants to go the football, and he delivers it extremely accurately. And then it's D.A. Williams that gets him down on the ground, but the sticks move after the huge turnover. Blue Raiders marching down the field. They just got it in the 35 now, but you think back to red zone. Four trips, one touchdown for Middle Tennessee. Don't want to settle for a field goal again. Another inside give. It's Dobson this time. So a little fly sweep adjustment here in the second half for Middle Tennessee. Great that time. That great job by Christopher Mull that time identifying and recognizing it. We didn't see much of the fly sweep game early. That's one of the adjustments that they made, but UAB was ready for it. This is an offense, Carter, that stresses you tremendously. You have to be disciplined with your eyes. It's fast. There's a lot of misdirection, and they create some confusion. Shifts, trades, and motions. That's it, baby. The good name of a restaurant. 
<laughs> Thomas in motion this time. And on second down, Mobley sheds the first defender, gets to the 30. You have third down from just outside the 30. After the Blue Raiders just converted on third down for the second time in the game. Well, Mobley had some problem with his shoot. He's going to come off for third down anyway. Through these third medium situations, UAB is not scared to run some man pressure and bring some pressure. They were able to get there with their front three late there in the second half. Going to be interesting to see what they do here. I think dialing up some pressure and letting Brent Stock still know that you're on that side of the football looking to make a play might be a good idea, and they're showing blitz here, but only rush three. Quick hitter. Great adjustment. Bruce has it, but he is short. Fourth down and two coming. You do have the wind, and you factor that in as far as field goal range and field goal distance. You got the wind behind you, but Brent Stock's still in the offense or staying out there. I like this decision. They've been aggressive all game long. They went for it earlier in the first half, and it paid off for them here. If you're UAB, you have to hold your water and not jump off sides and give them a fresh set of downs. This is going to be possibly a flare pass out to the flat. But they're making an adjustment here based on what UAB is showing defensively with two high safeties. Stock still fourth and two flings it knocked away incomplete Blazers get the stop D.A. Williams bats it away and UAB finally stops the Blue Raiders on fourth down. Johnston throws the pick but the Blue Raiders unable to turn it into points. D.A. Williams bats it away, helping out his QB. Still 24-16. It's an eight-point game, UAB 24, Middle Tennessee 16. Join our Tops crew bright and early tomorrow morning, 8 Eastern, prime time. Adam Shine and company getting you ready for another jam-packed day of the NFL. Don't miss the unmatched analysis and bold predictions from our football experts on that other pregame show right here on CBS Sports Network. Blazers had a false start and then a pick last time they had it. Went the wrong way. Tyler Johnson, the third redshirt freshman, hands off Spencer Brown. Pushing the pile and pushing Reed Blankenship across the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the fourth down stop by the Blazers. Yeah, I thought that D.A. Williams could have got called for pass interference. You see that left hand completely impeding the process of C.J. Wyndham. I love letting guys play and be physical. You have equal rights to the ball. UAB, I thought, got burned earlier in the game where the officials ruled that they didn't have possession. And I think Middle Tennessee got burned there with the no call in the pass interference. Both these teams starting the second half with turnovers. UAB with an interception and downs for Middle Tennessee. Showing edge pressure. Johnston runs right out of the pressure and has enough to move the chains. Darius Harris finishes it all. But Tyler Johnston, the dual threat. That was one of the big questions for the Blazers. After Johnston was beat up by the Aggies, didn't play last week, could he come back and be effective? The answer is yes. There was some edge pressure there. They were bringing a quarter cat off the edge. That's the thing that they couldn't adjust to last week with A.J. Erdley, but Johnston reading it beautifully makes something out of nothing and moves the sticks. This move to Johnston for this game is proving crucial. That's Erdley on the sideline, the former Middle Tennessee Blue Raider. He was a Wildcat bulldozer package quarterback here in 13 and 14 and ends up at UAB playing against Middle Tennessee in the championship game after he quarterbacked last week. DQ Thomas makes the stop. I mean, that's a wild one. But when you, you have only 89 yards of offense and Tyler Johnston gets healthy again, that's when you make the decision to give the football to Tyler Johnson, although early, I mean, yet another bizarre wrinkle in this Blazers Blue Raiders rivalry as it develops. That is complete to Donnie Lee. Thomas makes the stop. Some nice job of moving the Launch point outside the pocket, but these tight end groups working extremely well together as Lee takes advantage of that and gets himself north and south. 
I wasn't impressed with the perimeter blocking by the wide receiver group for UAB, but that time Pittman comes through huge, creating a third and short situation. Johnston to Brown, of course, and Brown has just enough to move the chains. The sophomore from Kimberly, Alabama, went over 1,000 yards in the first half. This offensive line, Carter, was an honorable mention for the Joe Moore Award for what they've been able to create up front. They've sustained some injuries, but this is a unit that isn't intimidated by anybody. They went into College Station against Texas A&M a couple weeks ago and more than held their own. They've been banged up the third center all season long, but when they're healthy, there's as physical a group in the country as there is. Johnson's going to pull it and get a block on the edge. Lee blocking for his quarterback. And Wesley Bush shoves Johnson finally out of bounds. Tick, 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 tick. These are the body blows. When UAB started to slow things down in the middle of that first quarter and get that run game going, things started taking off. First down success was critical to that. The first drive of the second half, they jump off sides. They end up turning the ball over. They go back to the run game. With some good decision making by Johnston, they're moving the sticks here pretty, pretty consistently. Johnston fakes the toss, keeps third and short. I mean, this started when, when UAB rattled off 21 straight points in the first half. It started with the 16 play, 75 yard drive. That was really getting back to what the Blazers did to get to nine wins this year. Control the line of scrimmage, that's what Bill Clark wants. He's a defensive minded head coach. We see it all over the country, whether it's Kirby Smart, Nick Saban. A little bit different this year with Tua Tunga by low, of course. Rocky Long out in San Diego State. Controlling the line of scrimmage with a powerful running game is critical to playing good defense. UAB going into the wind now. Third and short. And Brown shoved back. He did not appear to get the line. So now he got fourth down as Darius Harris makes the stop. And bring up the wind because, I mean, you're in no man's land. You're a long way away from anything here. And I... Uh, think Bill Clark and the, he's going to send the offense back out there for fourth down and in fact they are. Andre Wilson the wide receiver said no nah, man let's go for it let's go for it I would have been shocked if UAB didn't go for it here they've been controlling the line of scrimmage all afternoon long I love this call. Johnston out of the gun on fourth and one and now they'll bunch Johnston trying to get a push on the sneak and this is a big spot coming. It is close. Middle Tennessee certainly thinks they have the stop. Wow. Do you imagine back to back stops on downs by both of these defenses? To me, it looked like he got it. It depends on when they blew the whistle and that forward motion stopped. They got it. Middle Tennessee gets the stop, and the Blazers stopped on fourth down. So you go for it. It was third and one, didn't get it. Great job. Line up, go for fourth down, and just short. Great job by the Blue Raiders defense, a bow in their neck. Down by eight. The Blue Raiders get the football back. The defense does its job. Now can Brent Stockstill, the Blue Raider offense, get in the end zone. Teams have dramatic stories to tell. Brent Stockstill playing for his dad, Rick, trying to get Middle Tennessee its first outright conference championship since 1992. The Blazers, two years after not having a team, trying to win a conference championship. Brent Stockstill goes diving for a yard. Chris Mole brings him down, but he is literally laying it all out there. I was wondering when we were going to see Stockstill's legs. I thought we would have seen it maybe some third down or red zone situations. They elect to bring it out here, but just an indication of just how desperate Middle Tennessee is to try to find a run game. Only 35 rushing yards today, quite a bit less than they're used to. So fling it to the outside, and that is Patrick Smith. He is wrestled down by Chris Mole on the edge. Third down coming for the Blue Raiders. 
converting on third downs is something that this offense has been exceptional at this season but when you get stopped on first down you end up playing catch up that was a big important gain here at midfield because it gives you a third medium situation if middle tennessee is expecting man expect to see some rub routes if they're expecting zone see the crossing routes underneath with guys trying to catch and run to get to the sticks only two third down conversions today for the blue raiders High snap, handled by Stockstill, pressured again. On the roll, Brent Stockstill needs some help downfield. Dumps it complete. It is first down. How about Casey right past the sticks to make the grab at the 45. Stockstill kept it alive. Casey's been huge. He comes back when Stockstill has nowhere to throw the football. First of all, UAB's getting home with three people collapsing the pocket, but 87 shows his numbers right there. A big, nice target with a safe throw to move the sticks. That's the third time today we've seen Stockstill check down to Casey. That last one was huge. And how about Stockstill there with a little false motion downfield to get the Blazers turned that way and then the check down. Savvy. Guy already has his master's degree. Stock still is going to hand off to Varis Thomas. Nothing there in the run game for Middle Tennessee. They're going to have to manufacture it with flare passes or some of the speed sweep stuff that we've seen on the outside. The problem is every time they've tried that so far in this game, the edge and perimeter defenders for the Blazers have done an excellent job of forcing everything back inside, just like we saw there. Chris Mole with another tackle for loss for UAB. Eight-point game, four and change to go in the third quarter. But with Middle Tennessee's struggles in the red zone, this starts to feel a little late for the Blue Raiders. There's a shovel toss on second and 12, and it opens up with Casey blocking, and it is Dobson touchdown, Middle Tennessee, Zach Dobson. We talked about that perimeter run game and manufacturing some sweeps. This is technically a pass, but we've seen this young man, Dobson, be huge. Had a couple touchdowns a week ago, one on the ground, one through the air. He's the most explosive player that they have in Middle Tennessee, likely going for two here to tie this ball game up. Why would you not? This Blue Raider team has done everything underneath head coach Rick Stockstill except win an outright conference championship. It takes this sort of aggressiveness to get that done. Four receivers at the top. Casey's on the bottom. Screen. Right side. Not even close. Mobley makes the catch and the Blazers rally to the football led by Chris Mole. And UAB stops the two-point conversion. Blazers still have the lead. 24-22. The touchdown goes 46 yards to the freshman, Zach Dobson, pulling them within two. But the Blazer D keeps him out of the end zone to preserve the lead late into the third. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. And by Rogue, leading provider of American-made strength and conditioning equipment. After Western Kentucky back-to-back, -back, FAU, CUSA champs last year, either UAB or Middle Tennessee will be Conference USA champs for the first time at the end of this one. And in a back-and-forth game, Blazers by two, fair catch to the 25. Let's go back to that touchdown. Well, big plays happen with execution and great effort. Look at all this up here. That's eye candy. The play's coming back here, but keep your eye on number 87, Gatlin Casey. He's going to release inside like it's a play. Dobson's going to get the flip pass, and right there he blocks two players. The safety takes the bad angle. We call that twofer. And a ton of yards later, it's Zach Dobson with the great play call by Rick Stockstill and his staff. Some good effort up front. Middle Tennessee showing some fight trying to get this done. There are some sports terms that don't make sense. The twofer where you take out two guys with one block. That seems to be pretty accurate. Short gain, Spencer Brown. Rakavian Hoydris with a tackle for loss. Tackle for minimal gain anyway. 
Boy, just showing some emotion and some spunk there. Been a backup for these guys, a red shirt sophomore from right here in Clarksville, Tennessee, went to Clarksville High School. That sort of first down ability to stop this run game is crucial because it forces UAB to get out of its comfort zone. Johnston hands off. This is Stanley and Lucius Stanley across the 30. Boy, with Rakabi and Poydras making plays and Lucius Stanley making plays. Happy those guys' names got in. <laughs> I don't even want to mention how I've got it spelled phonetically. <laughs> <on my board. laughs> Critical third down situation here. Middle Tennessee bone its back a little bit. We've seen Johnston's legs be effective. This is a perfect situation for a play action pass. Maybe give a two way go to your quarterback out on the edge. That looked funny there, miscommunication. It sure was. Busted play from the start. It's incomplete. Plays dead. That's an incomplete pass. Brooks gets the pressure on Johnson, but you're right. It was almost like the snap from the center Dufour who's coming back may have been early. We'll We've see. seen the Stonehenge situations where the offensive linemen stand like statues. That was just miscommunication. That's the second time in this ball game where I think the cadence with Tyler Johnson, the new quarterback, has cost his Blazers offense. Lee has it inside the 30. Uh -oh. Lee across the 35. Lee, he's still still going, but maybe he should have gone down. He's going to push back a little bit. That was a winding punt return from Lee. Middle Tennessee gets a football down by two. College football championship weekend. This is the 2018 Conference USA Championship. And then tonight on CBS Sports Network, got a college hoops doubleheader. The defending American champ Cincinnati in a non-conference class with UNLV 6 Eastern and Greg Marshall's young Wichita State squad taking on Baylor. Cincinnati and Wichita State, both in the American and both have become regulars in the NCAA tournament. Mick Cronin, Cincinnati, eight straight tournaments. Greg Marshall and Wichita State, seven straight. You can see both of them tonight right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Brent Stockstill in the Middle Tennessee offense. Why not go right back to that shovel for Dobson? That's what led to the touchdown. Dobson gets you a five more here on first down. Middle Tennessee trying to attack the perimeter now. They couldn't get anything going up inside that big defensive line for UAB, keeping them from the outside edge. So they're trying to exploit them on the perimeter. On the last series, Dobson had that huge run for the touchdown. They just went back to him there. So it's like a two-man look again. Two high safeties, each taking the deep half of the field. Man-to-man -man coverage and press coverage on the outside wide receivers. Fake it, toss it, incomplete. Missed it to Ty Lee on the outside with D.A. Williams in coverage again. Third down for Middle Tennessee where they have struggled today. When you're playing press coverage, you have to redirect the wide receiver. Williams did an excellent job that time against Ty Lee, forcing him to the outside. He had him in phase, doing a good job of making sure that he was in his hip pocket right there for the throw that ended up being off target. They're showing the similar thing here, possibly some crossing routes down here at the bottom of the screen. Two of the third down conversions have been in the third quarter. Stock still delivers against the pressure. It's off of Lee, and it's picked off. Turner comes away with it. A sliding Lee couldn't haul it in, and it's the second pick thrown today by Brent Stockstill. Dijon Turner takes it away. This one wasn't on Stockstill. This is on the receiver. Good protection that time. Finds him, puts the ball. A little bit low, but it's right on the money. Ty Lee can't come up with it, but Dijon Turner is more than happy to repay the favor. Only seven interceptions so far this year coming into today's game. Eight and nine have been huge for the Blazers, particularly here in the third quarter to stop that drive. 
So Tyler Johnston in the UAB offense. Shovel on the outside street. And he is brought down after a gain of a couple. Darius Harris again on the stop along with DQ Thomas. And if you're UAB, the ability to run some clock right now, I mean, you pick up a first down, you can take it to the fourth quarter with the lead. These are the body blows. We remember that 16 play drive from the first half and this rushing game that has been there all afternoon long. Middle Tennessee committing more to stop the run. Got eight, nine guys near the line of scrimmage here on this play. Now loading up the box, Khalil Brooks. No gain, third down coming for the Blazers. This is what we saw in last week's game, exactly that. Middle Tennessee very early said, hey, we're going to force you to throw the football to beat us, and they did exactly that. They couldn't do it. We're going to have to see Tyler Johnson and his arm loosen this defense up, hit some more of those vertical shots like we saw in the touchdown earlier in the game to get this offense some room to run on the ground. Throwing into the wind. He puts it in the air on third and six. But first timeout for UAB. They were discombobulated prior to this third down play. Timeout, UAB. They're first. It will be 30 seconds. So with 18 seconds to go in the third, now you also have your attention on a middle Tennessee defender who's down. That's Khalil Brooks, the weak side linebacker. But you use timeout because again, third and six. I mean, this is big, especially if you can possess it into the fourth quarter. And in the Blazers, the, the big drive of the day was that 16 play drive. And you go on one of those, starting in the third, into the fourth, able to put it in the end zone, you're making a big statement. Yeah, this defense has been on the field a lot and taking a lot of body blows in this first half. To their credit, Middle Tennessee in this third quarter doing a really nice job against the run game. So here's where some of the cat and mouse starts to go. Middle Tennessee extremely aggressive a week ago. You see Khalil Brooks with his left leg caught up underneath there in the pile. Popped up there pretty quick though, at the very end. Looking healthy as he walks off the field, but third and six, a critical key situation here. One on one down here at the bottom with Kylon Carter, their playmaking wide receiver. Safety inside the half. He's got the one-on-one -on -one if he wants it. Zone coverage here. Johnson, QB draw, third and six. And he goes rolling across the 50 to get the first down. Blazers spread it out for their quarterback, Tyler Johnston. 11 seconds left in the third. Great call, great execution, keeping a hat on the hat. The offensive line did not give up on the play. And once again, it's Johnston's legs that bailed him out of trouble. As now we take a look at Bush, the free safety who's down on the ground who had his sixth interception earlier in this game. The takeaway by the Middle Tennessee defense, and Bush is down. So you lose Brooks prior to third down, and now Bush prior to the first down that UAB picks up. So two of the key defenders banged up now for Middle Tennessee. Whenever Brooks is, whenever Bush is ready to head to the sideline, then we'll wind the clock, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. Clock winds, and UAB with the football and a first down heads to the fourth quarter with a two-point lead on Middle Tennessee. The Blazers and the Blue Raiders both seeking their first Conference USA championship, and we go to the fourth with a two-point game. Six on the board in the third for Middle Tennessee, but the failed two-point conversion is the difference in the game, 24-22. Blazers got hot with that 21 straight when they dominated the game in the second quarter. Middle Tennessee doing a nice job of making adjustments by loading the box and trying to force UAB to throw the football to win. Stockstill's legs came up huge on that last third down play, though. Middle Tennessee was off to a 13-3 start in this game. Blazers taking the lead back and they snap it on first and ten to begin the fourth with a two-point lead johnston trying to find the edge cuts it back gets to near the 45 khalil brooks by the way 
ankles taped. He should be good to go for Middle Tennessee. Jamal Jones makes that stop, and there is Khalil Brooks out there to begin the fourth. It's good to see him back. He's been a huge playmaker for him all season long. Had two and a half sacks a week ago when UAB couldn't run the football and it was pass heavy. Good to see him back out there. As is Wesley Bush. So both of those defenders that went down at the end of the third are back out there to start the fourth. Second and seven. Johnston hands off. Spencer Brown shoved back. Poitras at the point of attack along with Tyson Rinder to force third down. With Davion Boy just right here in the middle doing an excellent job of controlling the line of scrimmage, playing on the other side, disengages, getting blocked by two guys, just fights through it, eats the blockers up to let those second-level linebackers like Darius Harris come down and clean up the trash. Huge stop by Rakavian Poydras. To force third and six. Last time we saw a draw, Middle Tennessee showing pressure. Do they come or bail? Johnson fake it, looking to toss it. Screen, street, thrown up in the backfield. Reed Blankenship flies in to force fourth down near midfield. Hunt unit is coming on for UAB. Great job by Reed Blankenship. Their field safety coming back into this ball game. He read this the whole way, comes downfield, avoids the block from the offensive line with the very safe screen game. Street ends up on the ground. In Middle Tennessee, the defense coming up huge, getting the ball back for Brent Stockstill and company. Number 12, getting it back for number 12. Greenwell hits it. This will clearly bounce. No controversy this time. Touchback. 24-22, Blue Raiders get the football down in the fourth on their home field. Nine wins for UAB, eight wins for Middle Tennessee. Both these teams will be bowling. So we take a look at the bowl projections according to Jerry Palm. Boca Raton Bowl looks like Middle Tennessee. Independence Bowl, Shreveport, UAB. And the Gasparilla Bowl, as of now, projected Southern Miss and Cincinnati. It would be great to see Southern Miss get that Gasparilla Bowl. The game's in Tampa. They would travel well there. They've got a pretty dang good defense this year. Conference USA, six guaranteed bowl tie-ins with seven possible and, and bowl-eligible teams. Southern Miss kind of being the outlier there. Great to see that Jerry Palms got them playing because they deserve it. Jack Abraham, 73% passing. Here's a handoff. Thompson's going to break another one across the 50s. Tripped up. It's a touchdown saving tackle by Marshawn Diggs, who then goes over and chats with Zach Dobson. Well, the secret speed weapon of Zach Dobson, the freshman from Knoxville's Fulton High School, a TD run, and now this one goes for 48. Dobson so explosive on the perimeter. UAB needs to adjust. Only six guys in the box that time. Everybody reacted to what was inside. False start. Offense, number 74. First down. That's Robert B. Hannon. Versatile player, played center last year, left tackle back in 2017. Nothing worse to kill a drive than starting with a penalty after a huge play. Dobson has a 46-yard touchdown catch and run, and then that 48-yard rush. Had a 45-yard touchdown a week ago. Stark still finds a wide open man downfield on a bust. Patrick Smith has it. First and 15 turns into first and 10 in the red zone. This is what we saw earlier on in the first half. Guys coming free with coverage breakdowns on the back end. UAB seems to be on its heels again and discombobulated. They have played well here in the red zone when the field has shrunk. That should help them. Three times holding Middle Tennessee to field goal. So Mobley shoved out at the 10. Field goal gives you a lead here, but the Blue Raiders want to get it in. Here he is right here. He's just going to push the ball up the field vertically with a little bit of a pick route, and there's a breakdown. Four players break inside to cover Ty Lee, leaving Dobson completely wide open. Just poor communication and execution on the back end here in the second half, which is how this team got down 13-3 to early in the first quarter. Second down inside the 10.
Stock still pressured. Complete on the outside. Right into the pressure. He sometimes, somehow heaves it, but a very short gain there for Bruce. Third down coming from inside the 10. Good coverage that time by UAB, but Stock still stays patient. Good protection. I love this receiver group. They come back to it. Look, he's holding the ball. Good job of finding an open late receiver. That's just that savvy veteran leadership. And guys being on the same page, coming back to make a play. UAB in these situations hasn't been over aggressive. They've got a bunk set here to the right of the line of scrimmage. They can run flares, they can run screens, or this can actually be a run from here. Dobson, there, there it is, on the toss. Dobson wrestled down and dropped for a loss. Chris Mull was all over Zach Dobson. This time to force fourth down and bring the kicking unit on again. Here he's gonna come off the right side of the screen, fights through the block and sets the edge. You just can't win like that. Ty Lee, the receiver, number eight, missed his block. And Mole makes him pay, forcing another field goal. How about this Blazers defense bowing their neck in the red zone today? It has been the difference. Holt kicking into the win. Not whipping too bad right now. 33-yarder for the lead into the win. Holt easily boots it through. And Middle Tennessee grabs the lead early in the fourth quarter. UAB keeps him out of the end zone. But Middle Tennessee, a one-point lead. By a point now, the Blue Raiders 25-24. So UAB went on a 21-0 run and led this game 24-13. Since then, it's been Middle Tennessee on a run of their own. We usually talk about runs in basketball season, but this has been a game of runs between the Blazers and the Blue Raiders. The big difference there, though, UAB scoring touchdowns when they got opportunities and Middle Tennessee kicking field goals. This is the point in the fourth quarter where this run game of UAB needs to show up and take over. Short kick, knee at the 25. Pound for pound is brought to you by Rogue Fitness. Well, the Blazers clearly needed to run the football better than minus one like they did last week. So give it to Spencer Brown and pound for pound. He's going to make a count. It's who they are. It's what their identity is. But then we also saw some great running by Tyler Johnson. Brown down there in the red zone making his presence felt. And then 17 taking over, getting himself a rushing touchdown. 173 combined rushing yards today and two touchdowns for Spencer Brown and Tyler Johnson. Yep, that's significant improvement. 185 yards better, in fact. Fake it on first down. Johnston to the air, wants a deep shot on first down, and it is incomplete. And if anything, that could have been offensive pass interference on Andre Wilson, because Reed Blankenship had a chance at that football. Blankenship impeded Wilson's progress to the football, but he was looking at the football himself. So to your point, partner, you're spot on with equal rights to the football. Just good technique that time by Blankenship forces the incompletion. And now UAB second and ten. You dial up the big one. Now you got to shove your way a little bit on second and ten. They're looking to pass it again. Johnston to the air, second and ten. That's complete to the outside. That's Parham who has it for a first down. So aggressive deep shot on first down, big completion on second down. Well, I think they were thinking, Middle Tennessee was thinking what I was thinking, which is that, hey, they got to come out here and run the football. But this staff clearly trusting Tyler Johnston's arm. Parham comes up big. That was a beautiful throw, very patient and perfectly located to move the sticks. Johnston has played the hold way today for the Blazers, rotated with Erdley throughout the year. Short gain, Ferguson, who was a question mark in this game, makes that stop for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, that time Ferguson was matched up one-on-one -on -one with Lee DeFour, the center. DeFour's got that big brace on his right elbow, so it's hard to get that leverage and maintain the sustain the block. He's doing a good job coming off through the first two phases, which is contact power, but he starts to fall off about halfway through because he just doesn't have the leverage he wants, which that right snap hand provides. Fake the toss, Johnston dropped in the backfield, tackled for loss by Trey Philpotts to force third down. 
This is just a Q power where you're trying to get Johnson's legs to be able to run. Johnston was confused about where it is he wanted to go. There was immediate pressure there. The right tackle, excuse me. Yeah, the right tackle getting himself beat. And now you've got a third and long situation. Credit Middle Tennessee on that last play of getting penetration. That was actually on Rashard Cook, the left guard that got his face crossed there. But nonetheless, great opportunity here for the Blue Raiders. Pressure coming on third down. Johnston on the roll. Johnston sacked. Here comes a flag. It's Trey Philpotts credited with a sack on Tyler Johnston the third. Now we check the flag. This might be a hold. Middle Checking Tennessee. to see whether they'll decline it or not. And you take the sack. Holding. Offense. 71. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. So for a team that struggled with penalties, they're paying the price. Middle Tennessee's defense starts up. Look at Reed Blankenship there coming from depth. It was his presence, even though he didn't get home, that flushed him out to the pocket and the waiting arms of his buddies forcing the punt. Greenwell gets it away. Lee backs up inside the 20. Fair catch. Makes the grab in the wind at the 16. Middle Tennessee, one point lead and the football. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chick fil A Catering. It's the little things that take the stress out of the holidays. By Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. And by Ram Trucks, built to serve. UAB has not scored in the second half. They have punted on three straight possessions, and the Blue Raiders have the football at their 16-yard line with a one-point lead in the fourth quarter. Both teams seeking their first Conference USA championship. Brent Stockstill on the edge. Short completion, Mobley trying to get some yards after catch. Maybe three. Dig shoves him out. Patience here is the key in communication on the back end. We take a look at the quarterback comparison today. Tyler Johnston really giving this offense some life, but the story is Brent Stock still had a tremendous career through the two interceptions, one of which wasn't on him, but 345 yards. The most that UAB has given up since they got this program track back on track back in 2015. Handoff, Mobley on the left side. Picks up a couple. Boy, there's lots of pushing and shoving in the backfield. No flags. Woolbride makes the stop, third and short. But I think the pushing and shoving is going to continue for the last seven minutes of this football game. And it'd be a great way for Middle Tennessee to kind of exert itself. It's really struggled to get some run game going today. Now's the time in a ball game where you need it. You've got the lead. You want to try and ice the clock. This is a perfect four minute situation where the run game comes in handy. But you got to get it here. Third and two, fake it to Mobley. Stockstill chased. Stockstill sacked. More pressure on Brent Stockstill. Trey Crawford gets this sack to force a punt. Blazers will get the football back near in six minutes. Here he is at the top of the screen, just going to run from behind. He's got so much speed, just beats the tackle on the outside. Stock still keeping his eyes downfield, wants to be able to make a throw. But when you have speed and a big old club and cast on your right hand, Crawford gets home. Huge third down stop to get the ball back for their offense that desperately needs to get some points here in the fourth quarter. They have got nothing going offensively. Wilson picks it up at the 50. Wilson. Going to say he was down when he got it back around the 50. Either way, they're going to be on the plus side of the 50. Now, Bill Clark is saying, I'm not sure why he's whistled down. I wasn't either. I mean, there was no fair catch signal. That was an inadvertent whistle, it seemed like. It did not look like his knee was down when he picked that football up. I don't know what they called here. I mean, the, the whistled the play dead. It's like the side judge came in to whistle that one dead was. I mean, the only issue would be if Wilson's knee was down because he did not signal for a fair catch. Uh, 
this would be a break of maybe 15 yards. <laughs> Every yard counts in a championship oh, yeah. game, brother. You're still going to get it on the plus side of the 50. No, this, this is clearly. During the kick, there was an invalid fair catch signal. The ball what? being placed at the 47-yard line. First down. That that's a that's a blown call. Correction. Balls at the 50-yard line. The only thing that I think that they could have even possibly remotely understood as an inadvertent. He, he's pointing uh, he's down won. rather than up. They blew it. They blew it and it costs UAB 15 yards. Can the Blazers overcome some adversity? The deck, deck's been stacked against them, but the ball's in their hand. Let's begin with the definition of a valid signal given by a player at Team B. Obviously signals his intention by extending one hand only clearly above his head and waving that hand from side to side. An invalid signal is any waving signal by a player of Team B. That didn't look like a wave. It didn't. That's a tough call for UAB. Let's see if they can overcome it. So on the outside, here goes Brown inside the 40-yard line with a block on the edge from Carter. Brown takes it inside the 20 before Bush finally makes the stop. Spencer Brown is down, but after he makes a huge run for the Blazers. He's been battling injuries all season long, only one touch a week ago. By far been the biggest difference maker here today. Hard to see what happened. Great job on the right side of the line of scrimmage that time by the Blazers offensive line. Brown takes advantage of it. Hard to see what happens there. Had a couple players on top of him as he came down, but he walked off under his own volition, which is good. Street's in the backfield now, and Street takes it inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. 5.20 to go in a one-point game. The Blazers erase the disadvantage of the fair catch, no fair catch, on that run by Brown to set him up in the red zone. Well, with the score being the way that it is, obviously UAB wants a touchdown, a field goal would give them a couple-point lead. Two touchdowns and a field goal. They've been quite a bit better when they've been down there. Spencer, luckily, back in the game. This helps him out tremendously here as we see the full house backfield. We're talking about the toughness. Second and five. Johnson's going to pull it. Johnson trying to find the edge. He's brought down by Khalil Brooks, who himself is slow getting up. Brooks is fighting through injury. Spencer Brown is fighting through injury. It is a championship game between the Blazers and the Blue Raiders and on both sides, you're seeing a championship will at this point. It's been an unbelievable season for both of these teams. They've written some incredible chapters. This book's not over yet. The pen's in both of their hands. And right now, UAB has a ball on the 15-yard line trying to put a bow on what's been a fairy tale season over these last couple years. Bill Clark says the movie's got to end with a championship, though. Brown is going to take it to the 11. Blankenship makes the stop. He appears to be just short, bringing up fourth down. Field goal gives you the lead under four minutes. And here comes the kicking unit. So Spencer Brown doing his very best to tough it out for the Blazers. Nick Vogel coming on to try and give UAB the lead, nearing three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Brown lost his footing at the end of that run, but this is the right decision. Remember, UAB got stopped on downs on fourth down. Needless to say, this is a huge kick. 28 yards with the wind. Vogel is good. And UAB grabs the lead with 323. A good hold by Jacob Clark the son of UAB head coach Bill Clark. He gets it down, Vogel gets it through, and the Blazers take the lead 27-25. This was just perfect execution. The kicking game been a problem for UAB. Been pretty clean today. Thought Andre Wilson had a bad call with that invalid fair catch signal, but the Blazers able to overcome that and take the lead with the kicking game.
And you can almost hear Bill Clark right now saying, all right, in order to, in order to win that championship, something's going to go against you, <laughs> and you have to play through. And that's exactly what the Blazers do. <laughs> Still discussing it on the sideline. It's incredible, man. In these championship situations, and I've played in two Super Bowls, everything has to slow down. You don't have to do more than you're asked to do. It's just about executing, avoiding the catastrophic play, not necessarily making the great one. This is going to be a heck of a drive coming up between this conference's best defense and an offense that's moved at will at times today. 323 and three timeouts for the Blue Raiders. Vogel's kickoff. Easy touchback to the 25 yard line. So this is the key play. You're in a two point game. This is the two point conversion. And that's the biggest stop of the day by a defense. And it was led by Chris Mole on that two point conversion in the third quarter. Mole's instincts and his ability to pursue have been huge all game long. Maybe none huger than that two point stop we just saw there. Now the UAB defense has been stellar in red zone situations and two point conversion and red zone stops holding him to field goals. That's been the difference. Brent Stock still two picks. He had thrown only six on the year prior to today. He's going to run it on first down and Stock still across the 30 has a first down. Mofor makes the stop, but a gain of 11 by Brent Stock still on they, the ground. They haven't run it much, but when they do, it's been effective. This is just a Q counter. You motion people one way and come back, run your quarterback behind two big pulling guards. This offense has struggled to run the football today, but that was a nice 10 yard pickup on the last one. Shovel toss again, Dobson, and now the Blazers are dialed in on 24 on the shovels and the sweeps. Yeah, he almost lost the ball there too, and this UAB defense is so good. Coming into this game, fifth in the country for tackles for loss, had eight a week ago. Just penetration and controlling the line of scrimmage and resetting it. There's big old Jamel Garcia Williams with those long arms, all six foot eight of them coming up huge, getting behind the sticks. This is where you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. We know that Middle Tennessee has to get themselves into a makeable third down situation. UAB hasn't done that much in this ball game, and here they're only going to rush three and play zone again. Beautiful throw by Stockstill to tie Lee in between levels of the defense to move the chains. First down. Right before that snap, Trey Crawford was creeping towards the left of your line of scrimmage. Then he tries to sink and realize what happens. It's that vacation of him trying to bluff that opens up that zone for stock still to hit Lee. They showed blitz but didn't bring it and paid the price. At the 50, just over two minutes, all three timeouts. 24 yards away from the field goal target line and Mobley gets him a little bit closer. You would be kicking into the wind, which is certainly a factor for Middle Tennessee and kicker Cruz Holt. Brent Stock still the Blue Raiders would like to just put it in the end zone and forget about kicking anything except a PAT. We've seen some busted coverages and some miscommunication by the backfield of the Blazers. They've got to be on point here. Second and six. Stock still chased, pressured, dumps it. And will this be intentional grounding? The officials will get back together. Was there a receiver in the area? Number 87 was in the area. There you go. Casey was in the area, no grounding, third and six. Left side of this defense, up top of your screen, both winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups. They're saying 87 is in the era. He was in a comeback mode, trying to come back for that football. Stock still very smartly got rid of it, kept it safe, didn't turn it over under extreme pressure. Third and six, clearly he got two downs to get those six yards. No question. This is a must situation in all accounts here for this offense. Stock still third and six, zips it, tipped and complete. Lee the intended receiver, contact from Culver, no flag, fourth and six. Now, I mean, you, you have the three timeouts, but you also have Brent Stock still one of the most experienced quarterbacks in all of college football and fourth down. And even if you don't pick it up, you still have those three timeouts to use on defense. So 
No question this is four down right here. If there's any other quarterback under center, you think twice about this. We've seen Middle Tennessee earlier in this game pick up some fourth down situations at this point in the field. I like this call. They've been aggressive all day. Keep going for it. On fourth and six, Brent Stockstill to the air, and it is incomplete. More contact downfield. No flags. UAB football with a minute 21, and a two-point lead gets the football back. And Rick Stockstill is irate. A good job of sorting this out. I thought that that was a good no call. The contact seemed to be inadvertent. Here you are down at this part of the field. Watch these two defenders here. They're going to do a good job of sinking. One's going to run a corner route and come back. There might have been some contact there on the 30 yard line. I think what the staff was so upset about was the slip, but that seemed to be two guys fighting for the football. But Rick Stock still clearly not happy thinking that his receivers got interfered with. Nonetheless, UAB's got this ball and needs to feature their run game with a minute 21 left. Well, Bill Clark was sprinting out to get his team off the field and say, stop celebrating. Timeout. UAB, their second. And, and It'll a, be 30 seconds. And this timeout uh, is a good one for Coach Clark, probably because you... I mean, they were starting to celebrate like the game was over. Well, with three timeouts, Middle Tennessee can still get the football back. You take a look at that. It's a clear look. Tavares Thomas was coming back for the football and slipped. I don't think that he was throwing the football there, though. I think he wanted to get it to 37 Patrick Smith, who was extremely well covered there from the slot. So again, UAB, you pick up a first down and ball game just about over. But if Middle Tennessee can get the three and out with the three timeouts, the game is still to be decided. Spencer Brown, first down carry, gets across the 50. Bush makes the stop. Good push. Got to take the timeout. Timeout number one at 115. Timeout. Middle Tennessee, their first. It will be 30 seconds. Huge play there up front by the offensive line. Seven yards a clip and an obvious run situation. That's what offensive lines are built upon. Spencer Brown, we said that he was key coming into today's ball game, that he needed 20 plus touches and over 100 yards rushing. And he's more than done that. Almost 30 touches, 29 for the day for 155 yards and a touchdown. This run game that was absolutely absent a week ago without him has clearly been the difference along with pretty good red zone defense through this point in the ball game. So snap it on second down. If you can stop them there, use another and have your final timeout for third down. But the defense has to make plays right now. They got to get a stop here. Johnson snaps it. Brown has it. Second and three tries to bounce it outside. Flying in Reed Blankenship. And just five seconds tick off the clock. Timeout, Middle Tennessee, third Timeout. down. Great job UAB. coming from the second level. Watch Blankenship right there. Huge open field tackle. Brown took it upon himself. There was nothing there inside. Wanted to bounce it. Ran into the back of his offensive lineman and coach Clark not happy because he knew that that was blocked up well but Brown tried to stuck it too far up inside elected to bounce and got tackled basically for no gain. A play by Blankenship that for now saves the championship possibilities for the Blue Raiders. Third and three. One timeout. A stop. A timeout. And the offense gets it back right around a minute just needing a field goal to potentially win the Conference USA Championship. Well, you made the decision to start Tyler Johnston today because of what he brought to the table with his legs. Don't be surprised if you see those in play here. Johnston's going to hand off. Brown, he is driven back. Jones gets the push. A third down stop. Fourth down coming. Third timeout taken with a minute two. It is fourth and very short. Timeout. Middle Tennessee. Their last. Now, Bill Clark seconds. and the Blazers, if you want to roll it all on fourth down, thinking you can move it, get the first down, and end the game, and this timeout by Middle Tennessee will give both sides to think through a minute five and fourth down coming. 
you've got an extremely good defense but you're facing an offense that's exploited you at times you're a team that prides yourself on running the football but you got stopped earlier on a four down situation what's the situation that you do here do they elect to be aggressive or do they elect to punt it away clearly the defensive minded coach has more confidence in his defense getting a stop to win the championship than he had in his offensive line running the football I don't like the call as an offensive lineman, but this is the right call for this situation by head coach Bill Clark. And that's why he's the head coach. And so Greenwell to punt it away. Lee is back punting with the win. And now I think Bill Clark, they're going to count to see if Middle Tennessee had 12 on the field. Is that how it's going to end? No way. Is that how it's going to end? Flag is down, and Middle Tennessee is flagged. We'll await the official word, but UAB celebrates an odd end if it is. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the defense lined up in formation. Five-yard penalty. The result of the penalty is a first down UAB. And with no timeouts, the Blazers with a minute five can take a knee. And college football's Phoenix. The UAB Blazers, two years after they didn't have a program on this bizarre play, will win the Conference USA Championship. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. With the returner makes twelve. And Bill Clark is the one who pointed it out. Of all of the moves Bill Clark has made, including staying in Birmingham when they didn't have a program. Of bringing the Blazers back onto the field, he has the critical call. And now it's calmed down. We got to take a knee and make it official. 27 25 12 men on the field determines the conference usa championship heartbreaking for middle tennessee there's a lot of ways to lose football games that should never be one of them especially in a game of this magnitude Breaking in for Middle Tennessee on their home field a week after a 27-3 dominating performance by the Blue Raiders. It's UAB who celebrates a championship unlike any other. A bowl game a year ago in your first year back as a program. And now, as the clock hits zeros in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 10 wins and a Conference USA championship for UAB. Bill Clark told his team it's an incredible story. Someday they'll make a movie, but the movie has to end with a championship. This is a program that was disbanded in 2014, but because of backlash, because of the financial support of influential people in the community, Bill Clark elected to stay on board, to do the unthinkable with no roadmap, no manual, built on faith and hard work that he could turn things around, and he has done just that. The program is a monument to the passion of the football fans in Birmingham, Alabama. And just two years back now, they have a championship to show for it. They told us it was about belief. Why did you decide to come back? Most coaches would have ran for the hills, but you were like a moth to the flame. He said, I just had a feeling. I knew, I believed. And it was that belief by Bill Clark that elected and attracted other people to stay in UAB, the 2018 Conference USA champions, just two years after getting their program back on track. What an epic, incredible 
gutsy season and what a crazy way for it to end. Your heart's got to go out to Middle Tennessee State, Carter. They battled their tails off. They were writing an epic story, a fairy tale of their own. But a critical miscue late ends their season and crowns the Blazers the champions of 2018. Spencer Brown played only one snap on this field last week. Tonight, 31 carries, 156 yards, and a TD, and Spencer Brown is the Conference USA Championship MVP. 89 total yards a week ago, 385 today, over 225 on the ground. Lee Dufour, the center, the offensive lineman, Rashard Cook being back in the lineup, Justice Powers not getting ejected, and of course, Spencer Brown. Bill Clark, defensive head coach, physical run game, red zone defense, champions. That was the vision he sold on everyone from every corner. 44 junior college transfers on this roster. When you do away with the program and then have to bring it back together a couple years later, take them from all directions. And you think about players like Colin Lisa, who started at UAB, then had to transfer, went to Buffalo, and came back to play for the Blazers. Once again, final score 27-25 for Aaron Taylor, John Schriff, and our entire crew. I'm Carter Blackburn. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We will be back for the post-game trophy ceremony. Now we send you to Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Randy Cross, Kevin Carter in New York. Inside college football.